Why, hello, my shopties. Um, I'm currently trying to figure out what the hell is going on with my chat box, so give me one second, because I don't know why that's not active. Um, yes, I sound horrible. Uh, don't mind me. Um, I know I sound like ass, but that's okay. It's all right. I don't feel astounding, but I don't feel so bad that I'm gonna keel, so that's okay. Why is that doing that? Oh, I hate it here. Okay, um, ah, it's not working. Why isn't it working? For what? For what? Um, Mm -hmm. I'm watching you. <laughs> ignore it. Ignore it. It's fine. It's fine. I sound, I sound wonderful. Don't I sound amazing? <laughs> Don't I sound incredible? Like absolutely a dream. <laughs> um, You guys get to hear my wheeze laugh today. <laughs> All right. Hello, Grizz. I hope you're well. And hello, Soulstone. Welcome. Um, so you're going live under Popeye and Lurk. Oh, thank you so much. Like a dream. Yeah, exactly. Like a dream. I sound amazing. Outstanding. Um, All right. We're going to go on to Streamlabs. Oh, it's working now. Okay. Thanks, Streamlabs. Fuck, fuck you. Oh, you guys are going to hear me cuss out a lot more than normal. <laughs> um, Streamlabs has been giving me a hard time lately. I don't know why. Um, my drinks of the day are my plain water and my special water. My special hydrating water and hot chocolate because warm drinks make the throat feel good. Is this cool enough for me to drink it now? Let's find out. Let's see. Hmm. Mmm. Much hot, much chocolate. Mmm, that feels good. Alright. My cat is horny. Great. Um, alright, we're gonna keep playing Witchwood. Uh, that's what we're doing today. I didn't know what I wanted to do today. Um, but to, I guess it's Witchwood now, so that's what we're doing. Um, what happened was, uh, the reason why I'm so diseased-ridden right now is that, um, uh, my roommates, they decided that they wanted to, uh, to bring home a cold, and that triggered a sinus infection that has been latent in my body since, like, 2018. That just keeps coming back. It just keeps recurring. I just keep getting this sinus infection. And so it triggered the sinus infection, and, um, which then, like, grew into something more upper respiratorial i'm okay i'll be fine but oh a gold coin hell yeah but uh i am i am a little a little under the weather right now um so you guys get to get to hear me being under the weather yay i don't remember what i have to do right now uh it's it's been two weeks since i played this game uh, where do I gotta go? Um, as a pleasant place to have to hear. I hope you can rest real quickly. I'm sorry. Hey, no worries. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> we all get sick sometimes. I'm I'm gonna be fine. Uh, I always bounce back. Um, hopefully. Uh, I get sick really easily, which is why I'm not like so gung ho about canceling stream. Cause I'm like, if I cancel stream every time I got sick, I would never be able to stream. You know. So it's nothing too bad. This is definitely not the worst thing I've ever dealt with in my life. Um, if I'm not throwing up, then I'm 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 doing good. Um, that's how I feel about it. If I'm not vomiting, then I'm 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 okay. <laughs> Stream is still on unless I sleep for twelve hours straight, which I did do. I was supposed to go live yesterday, and then I just slept through stream. 
<laughs> which was and that was that was probably the funniest part of it all um okay <clears throat> journal um i got i finished the snake um uh Speak to the ox at his farm. Yeah, we can do that. Ramsey's voice has become the uh, most beautiful groan. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll it'll do that. It'll do that. It'll in fact do that. <laughs> oh, I I understand. Still pace yourself. Thank you. I will. Folks will understand. You're all this far more important to us. Aw, oh, thank you. I will. I'll be I'll be patient with myself. I promise. I promise. I'll try. I'll try my best. Um And if I get too tired during my my thing was like, oh, I might feel better if I have some company, if I like hang out with you all. Cause when I don't hang out with you all, I get sad and lonely. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I might feel better if I like you know hang out with you all um so that's kind of what I'm doing but if I if I grow too tired or whatever or I run out of energy I'm 100% I'm just gonna like dip it'll, it'll be good I'll send you guys over to like whoever else is live and I just kind of dip away for the day um Supposed to go live yesterday after work, got home, try to wait, take a 45 minute nap. Four, three hours later, I woke up and still streamed. I, that, that's great, honestly. I can, I can vibe with that. <laughs> Die picks it. Yeah, I, I hate how they scream. Actually, that was a fairy. The pixies are the annoying ones. And they're at rivalry with the fairies. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, Lurk this week says kick my robotic butt, so I guess I need three. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Glad you got some sleep, honestly. Sleep is important. A lot of people underestimate the importance of sleep. It's, it's very, very, very key. I get mad whenever uh, something crops up that, like, leads to me sleeping less because of... You know, people needing help and stuff like that. I get I get upset you whenever that happens. It's like my pet peeve. Um, whenever I have to like sacrifice my sleep, because <laughs> it's so bad for you to not get enough sleep. Like it's just really bad for you. It's not healthy. It's not great. So try try if you're tired, sleep. Unless you're sleeping all the time, then uh, maybe don't. Um, <laughs> That might be a little much. Moderation is key. <laughs> oh yeah, these turkeys will kill me if I'm not careful. Uh, can I? Digestive tablets? Are they angry because they're having indigestion? I get angry too when I have indigestion. That's why I always have Tums. Mmm, Tums. So it's good eye and every time I see a fairy in all caps, my, <laughs> my brain goes, Fairy Godparents! <laughs> <laughs> fairy god parents oh that's i that show's great <laughs> the show's so funny classic beekeeper sorry we're close to the season you'll have to come back later bah why 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 are you closed for this season I'm a fairy. Why am I a fairy? I'm not a fairy. I'm 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 a I'm a I'm a nerd. That's what I am. I'm not fairy. Fairies and nerds can't be the same thing. Fairies are too cool for me. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> I'm just rambling at this point. Oh, there's nothing back here. Shit. I'm stuck. <laughs> uh, 
I want this grasshopper. Come here, you're annoying me. Snatch. Hopper leg. I don't remember what I need grasshoppers for. But I remember searching for them incessantly last stream. Uh, actually, that's a fairy, not a pixie. <laughs> that was a fairy! That was a fairy and not a pixie. That was, in fact, a fairy and not a pixie. <laughs> and and uh, in the lore of the game, that was a fairy and not a pixie. I I'm sorry, the pixies are the 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 smaller ones. Interact, and you could scare the eggs out of them. <laughs> You're all fucking legend. <laughs> Voice actors with Rocco from Rocco's Mario. Oh, does he really? I didn't even know that. There's a cow. It's a cow. Uh, I don't even. I don't want milk. Milk. He needs some milk. Lazy grass. Oh, come back here. Yay. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm just keep burping. It's it's a problem. I don't I don't want to keep burping, but I keep burping. Oh, there's the oxus farm. Okay. Meow. Get that <laughs> meow from the earnest. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> you guys are also gonna hear me cough. Enjoy that. It's gonna, it's gonna sound great. Uh, sound of me oh my gosh, look at that cute little dog! This old pooch deserves a treat. Look at that cute little dog! Sporific morsel and shears. Come here! Yeah. Yay. Um, I get trowel. Yeah. Oh, hello. That gourd head's bound to rot. What? Ox. Hey, this is private property. What are you doing trespassing on my land? Why, well, I, I just came to admire the glow of your crops, Master Ox. I heard you produce the most beautiful produce in the land. Ha, huh, well, you heard right. I work day in and day out till my hands are raw and my back is broken. But you won't find a finer farmer anywhere else. You're sure to take first prize at the Harvest Festival again. You and your family must be so proud. The ox spits on the tilled soil. Ha, huh, those lazy louts never understood the pride and joy of devoting oneself to the land. I'm gonna drink more. Apparently they do. It's to make the dog fall asleep. Mother's meow. <laughs> Mother's meow. <laughs> no worry about the burps. Yeah, I burp a lot. You're gonna learn that. Everybody learns that. <laughs> I like burp every like 10 minutes. I, it's a GERD moment. Um, what good's a family that gripes hard about hard labor? We never, we, we'd have never won any of those competitions if it wasn't for my sacrifice. Damn, you're proud. <laughs> Where's your family then? I can't help but notice you're working all by yourself. And you must know those damnable bandits out by the South Bridge stormed in uh, the place one night and stole them away. Bandits, you don't seem very concerned about getting them back. Ha, huh, I'm better off. For all I know, they could have been already ransomed off for fertilizer. But if you're so worried, why don't you go talk to those bloody brigands yourself? Now get your big nose off my fields or I'll toss you into the compost heap. Um. I see. So, his family just got, like, kidnapped and he's just like, yeah. You know, this is fine. <laughs> 
He's like, yeah, that's that's cool. My 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 family's probably dead, but you know, it's it's all right. It's all right. They were probably sold for fertilizer. <laughs> yeah, I'll steal his shit. He seems like an asshole. <laughs> but yeah, I can feed the dog shrooms though. You want to watch me feed the dog shrooms? I can do it. Do I have the stuff for it? I did not. Mm. I need a jar of water. Damn. Okay, that's fine. I won't feed the dog shrooms then. Don't actually feed your dog mushrooms. I'm pretty sure they can't eat it. <laughs> Hello, Miss Cruel. I am diseased. <laughs> I am not. I am surviving, not thriving. <laughs> How are you? How are you? I hope you're doing well. There are far too many for me to just sneak by. I'll have to find a way to incapacitate them. A dreadful doll. Alright, well... Um... A bandit's boss. Bandit boss. Ah, sly old fox. I, that's right. How'd you manage to get your creaky bones past me, grunts? God damn. My, my, my mooks must be getting fat around the waist to let you slip by so easy. Damn. Never too old to teach some youngins that hands are better left out of people's pockets. Next time I catch one of you thugs rooting for gold, they'll have to recount their fingers. Ha ha ha, I ain't afraid of nothing, are ya? Well, let me be the first to welcome you to our merry camp, though I suspect you didn't come to just scold us. What do you know about the ox who works in the southern fields? He told me his family might have come through this way. Oh yeah, we know all about the ox. We also might have seen the family of his. But on the other hand, maybe we didn't. What's it to you? <laughs> Damn, this guy's a jerk. Why is everyone such assholes in this game? Listen up, you big lug. The information is just about the only thing stopping me from changing the whole lot of you into stinking chickens. Uh, Alright, Granny, no need to get upset. We was just playing games, you know? Yeah, we seen that family, a boy and his mum, if I remember. Always walking in that big ox's shadow, always looking afraid of him, too. So you didn't kidnap them? Where are they now? You know, you remind me of my dear old ma. She she didn't take no gruff from no one, neither. Ah, uh, she used to bake the most delicious meat pies. I sure do miss her cooking. Me and the boys have been awful hungry lately. Thieving is hard work, and crime doesn't always pay. Say, do you know how to bake? I even got my ma's pie recipe right here. Who knows, at a full stomach, I might even remember something about mi about that missing family. This brute could use a healthy helping of crow. All right, humble pie, humble pie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> humble pie. Oh, that's so funny. All right. Um, roast beef. All right, which spice? I can make some of that. Okay, and then I can make this roast beef. And then what else do I need? Dough. Oh, I can make some dough. Sweet. And I can just like, yeah, humble pie. All right, cool. Just chilling today. Oh, that sounds lovely. Feel free to chill here. Excuse me. Got to head out. I got to get dressed for the stupid wedding. Oh no. Catch everyone later. Have fun though. I hope you have a good time. I don't remember being told about a wedding, but I hope you have a good time, Grizz. I hope you have fun. I hope you I hope you enjoy yourself. I was never one for weddings. Fun fact, I never l really liked weddings. Um 
I I don't know why. They just never really like interested me, you know? Um most of the time. I thought that they were kind of like over the top a lot of the times so when really you don't need something so big for for like commemorating your relationship. I mean, if that's what you want to do, then have a really big wedding. But like in my opinion, I think I think a smaller, more tight-knit wedding is probably more um meaningful. <clears throat> Say, do you know how to bake? I even got Moss Pile recipe. Humble pie. B505. <laughs> I want pie in my tummy tum tum. I hate that. Come on then, have a helping. The bandit plunges his hand into the pie, grabbing a fistful. He barks in delight as what chunks of pie filling. <laughs> spatter out of his gob ah delish just like how ma used to make but something's different he picks a small bo black feather from between his yellow teeth is this crow i figured you could do with a serving of humility the gargantuan gargantuan man's lips begin to quiver great watery t tears swell up in his beady eyes what's the matter dearie are the spices too strong Sniff? Nah. It ain't the smite spices, Sniff. It's just... It's just... He deteriorates into great shuddering sobs that shake the camp. Ma always said I was a bad seed. Said I weren't good for nothing but eating and thieving. But all I really wanted to do was dance. <laughs> yeah? I was gonna make the greatest dance troupe in the world. The, the greatest dance troupe the world had ever seen. Had a name and mine and everything. Picked it. <laughs> pick. <laughs> Picking the leaping pocket. <laughs> but, but, I ain't been doing nothing but taking. Always taking. Oh, Ma was right. I'm a bad apple. <laughs> Come on now, dry those eyes. They're not all that bad. He snorts a dangling glob of snot back into his nose. Oh, God, that's disgusting. <laughs> Get get crunk, Grizzabel. I hope Grizzabel gets crunk. Grizzabel deserves it. <laughs> Snurf. <laughs> Snurf. <laughs> you really think so? You genuinely reassure him with another helping of pie. Of course not. You're going to tell me about the Ox's family, aren't you? Oh, right. Well, you see, we've been spying on that Ox for years now. Every full moon, he'd go into his field all by his lonesome. He'd howl at the sky. What was it he'd say? Oh yeah, he'd yell Abracacorn Cobb. Then it always sounded like he got into an argument with someone, but there was never anyone else there, except that creepy old scarecrow of his. You pat the sniffling rogue on his scrubby on his stubby? Scrubby? Stubby cheek. That's a good lad. Maybe it's time to think about trading the daggers for dance shoes. He stuffs more handfuls of the crumbling pie between his blubbering lips. Yes, hmm? I'll do it. I'll dance. God, that's so funny. <laughs> he had to, he's like, I, I always wanted to dance. <laughs> Incredible. Outstanding. I love that. Um, all right, so now I gotta talk to the scarecrow. This eerie simulacrum of a human sways in the breeze. Its lumpy face seems to leer down at you as if expecting something. God, why do you look like that? Ah. Abraka Corncob? The figure creaks against its pull as its vegetative head twists to look at you. It takes a wheezing breath, expelling a moth from its mouth hole. Hello, yes? Have you come to strike a deal with the great and mag 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 magnanimous harvest master? Ugh, no thank you. I'm involved in quite too many dark contracts with supernatural beings already. Why then have you summoned me? Has the ox made a deal with you, perchance? 
The ox? Why, yes, a terrible trade, I'd say. But a deal is a deal. What sort of trade? Does it have to do with his missing family? Yes, he said he wanted to win pretty prizes, grow the best crops, said he would give up anything in the world. So he offered me his wife and son, and I'm not one to refuse a bargain like that. Where are they? What did you do with them? <clears throat> Don't worry, they're fine. But as long as I make the crops grow, they belong to me. And if the crops should fail, your deal would be broken. Ha, I am the great harvest master. My harvest will never fail. We'll see about that. I better take a closer look at those prize winning plants. Inspect the ox's crops. But where are his crops? Like what, what, where am I inspecting? Oh, here. A withering can? How do I make a withering can? Humph. These stalks don't look so sturdy to me. A good herbicide ought to shrivel these right up. That'll teach the ox a lesson about proper agricultural practice. I'll need a sturdy enough vessel to hold the poison, though. Maybe I could convince that vegetal fellow to give me a nice big old watering can of his. All right, let's go talk to the farmer then. <clears throat> I like this game. It's very comfy. So far, this is like one of my favorite games in Ghastly Gala right now. Don't you just love when my subtitles do not actually translate what I'm saying? Because instead of Ghastly Gala... It said, gasoline. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite games in gasoline. <laughs> Alright, I gotta find... Is it you? Good day to ya. No, not you then. Hmm. Gasoline month. Yeah, right? Gasoline month. Not spooky month. No, gasoline month. <laughs> God, I hate it. <laughs> <clears throat> Vegetal farmer. Well, hello again. Find out anything about what that ox is up to? As a matter of fact, I have. It seems he traded his family to a turnip wizard or field genie or some other such nonsense. Ah, you must mean the harvest master. That explains a lot, actually. Bad business to get mixed up with that sort of fellow. The farmer nervously wipes his brow with the back of his leafy hand. Er, not that I would know anything about that myself. Listen, I don't have time to exchange farm gossip. I need to borrow your watering can over there. Excuse me. Ah, I'd be happy to lend it to you, but unfortunately I still need to grow my prize winning vegetable. You glance down at the fat head of cabbage bobbing. Excuse me, bobbing gently against a blanket of big swaddling leaves. You think you have made a herd of, may have heard a faint giggle coming from deep within the fronds. Seems plenty big enough to me. Nah, just you wait. My little baby is going to grow up to be a great big baby. It's going to be the bells of all at this year festival. But if it were to say grow a little bit faster, I suppose I wouldn't need my watering can at all. You swear the farmer winks at you, despite not being equipped with any eyes. Ah, does, any, does nobody here grow produce in an oddest way? Let me take a look at the little tyke. You look down at the fattest little cabbage you've ever seen. But if it gets your hands on that watering can, it should st it could stand to be a little fatter. Um, okay. So 
I need to collect water for the cabbage. Um... All right, let me just get some water first, because that should be the easiest, right? Oh, hello, Brioche. I'm sick as a dog. How are you? I'm sure my voice sounds amazing, absolutely immaculate like this. How are you today? <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Um... Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, roommate. Okay, so to kind of start off with, I was given a sinus infection back in like 2018, and every year it comes back. So when roommates of mine brought home a cold, it triggered the sinus infection, which then spread everywhere else. So I just I'm just struggling with a, a mild infection. It's nothing too bad as far as I know. Um, no fever or anything. Um. But it is pretty annoying. <laughs> captions are mean. Yeah, captions captions are always mean. I didn't see what it did this time, but the captions are always really, really nasty. Um Oh, did they stop? <laughs> It's okay. They're they're back now. I would have noticed eventually and reset them because sometimes they just crap out. It happens. They're not perfect. OBS, I think, is to blame usually. Okay. So I have the water. Now I gotta make a growth potion. That's a glitter bomb. Um, ah, oh, there it is. <clears throat> I've got mostly everything. I feel like I'm going to need this, though. So I'm going to need another one of those. Okay, now I have the growth potion and a turkey gizzard stone. I feel like I need to get kill a turkey for that. Okay, oh, I can make one of the digestive tablets. All right, cool. And that should give me the gizzard stone, I think. Let me just give this to one of the turkeys. Ah, they got me. Okay, but I, I got the, the gizzard stone. It's all good. All right. And then I can make the mending pole. <laughs> okay. Um, so I can heal up. There. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, now I got everything I need. So I can talk to this guy. And come around. Alright. Pop them in the cork of the potion, sprinkle the bright liquid on the cabbage roots. Um, you spritz the cabbage with fresh, clear water while uttering a simple horticulture charm. The water beads like dew drops before the leaves shrink them up and brighten the color. And then turkey gizzard stone. Crush it to a fine powder. A gizzard stone lends potent nutrients to the soil. The budding plant changes to a bright purple, then blue, then yellow. It suddenly goes rigid and shrinks into the size of a marble. The former gasps in horror as his precious baby disappears back into the earth. He turns to you, shoulder stiff and pitchfork in hand. 
He takes one step in your direction, but stops abruptly when a tremor shakes the, the ground. You look to your feet and watch deep cracks split the earth. Hold on to your hat. This one's going to be big. And you hear a booming giggle echo from deep in the ground. The vegetable, vegetable farmer falls to his knees, clutching his hat to his chest. And an- oh god, it's so creepy. <laughs> and an explosion of leafy greens and flying earth, the bouncing head of an enormous cabbage erupts into the field. The farmer reaches out to it shakily. My- my little baby? Papa? <laughs> Talk. The farmer scrambles towards the big bumbling cabbage with open arms. My beautiful baby, look how big you've grown. See, with a little love and help from your friends, you're sure to win first prize after all. It is very cute, brioche. <clears throat> Sinus affections do suck ass, I agree. Um, not great, I'm in a flare-up. Microphone broke yesterday! No! My PNG stopped working today and I'm just like... Time pressure scream. <laughs> Streamer life. Yeah, no. Holy shit. I, I, the first thing I would recommend doing is while you're on the market for a new microphone and waiting for that, figure out what the hell happened to your PNG program. You might have to reinstall it because honestly, that's what it sounds like. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, but I hate when that shit happens. Not even going to lie. But yes, this game is very cute. I recommend it. It's called Witchwood. Do play it. Um, it's it's an amazing game. Of course, if you need any help, feel free to reach out because I'm very good at that stuff. Um, so, yeah. Oh my gosh, hello, Jay. How are you? How's your vacation? Are the woods witching? Yes, they are. <laughs> I'm sick as a dog, so don't mind me. I hope you're doing well. I hope your vacation's going fun. Um, I hope you're vibing and chilling. I've been seeing your updates on Twitter uh, when I'm not sleeping through them. <laughs> uh, but I hope you're doing okay. Um, see you with all the love and help from your friends. I don't even care about that silly thing anymore. Just look at how handsome my baby is. The two embrace, laughing and crying. I guess you won't be needing that watering can anymore. Please help yourself. You've been, you've helped me more than enough. Oh my God. I hate this cabbage. It gurgles at you gleefully. I hate this cabbage so much. It's such a hideous cabbage. It scares me. I see this, this cabbage in my sleep. <laughs> All right. So now that I have the watering can, uh, weird water. Okay, I just need a jar of water. So I need an empty jar. And then I could take that to... Ooh. Yes, please. I love that gnome who's just like chill. Like, he's chill. He's humming a song. He's just vibing. Alright. Now I've got that. And then I should be able to craft that. Yeah, word water. What else do I need? I need potion of blight. Oh, I can just craft that right now. See, this is what happens when you collect everything you can. All right. Collect a pumpkin jackbone from the from the fields. All right. So now. I should be able to make the withering can, yes. It's nearly midnight, so going about to get go to bed. Go sleep. Thank you for popping in. I fixed it. Hey yo, you fixed it. Oh my god, no, his sound alert's not working again. God damn it. Hold on. Every time! I swear, it is every fucking time. <laughs> my sound alerts break. Hold on.
Does it even play? Yo, what the fuck? Why is everything broken? Oh my god. My sound alerts aren't even playing. <laughs> Jay, it's your fault. <laughs> Jay breaks everything in my stream, I swear. Nah, nah, it was you. It was you. It was totally you. It was 100% you. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I, my chat box was broken earlier. So, um, and no matter what I did, it didn't work. It just fixed itself. So I'm going to see what's going on with sound alerts. All right, let me see if I can get to my dashboard on my phone. Log in with my Twitch. Um. Okay. My browser source is offline. Why is my browser source offline? What? It... All right, let me try that. Um let me see if I can get that to work. I'm like, wait, the, why is my browser source offline? N nope. <clears throat> is the panel still on? Maybe sound alerts is just down. Um... Um, oh, there's sound alerts. Ah, it fucking updated. No, no, god damn it. Okay, um, does it want me to just like completely reset up my sound alerts? Is that what it wants me to do? If it does, I'm gonna throw a fit. Um, I've already installed the instruction on Twitch. I use OBS. Do what? I don't know how to read that. I can't read that like this. Um. Okay. Uh, Oh my god, it they did just change the overall Why that's stupid. They changed my sound alert link. My browser source extension without telling me That's bullshit. That's fucking bullshit. 
Apparently mine does. Um... Okay, let me copy that. Now will it work? Oh, I heard the yippee. Okay, that works. Yay. It's fixed. <laughs> it's fixed. I fixed Jay's curse. Uh, but yeah, mine had a new link. I don't know why. Um, well, now I get to play a bonus yippee for Chattanoobus. There now, now I don't have to refund your points. You got, you got the yippee. <laughs> um, what am I doing? I need to go back to the Oxus field. That's what I gotta do. <laughs> um, just scary. Easy to see why the crows don't like these. So it pours off of enormous shoulders, labor unending. Um. Hmm. Huh. Excuse me. I don't mean to be yawning. Um. I mean, I have everything. I have everything I need. I don't fully know what I need to do now. Um, free yippee for emotional damages. It auto refunded me because the link was messed up. Damn. How dare you? Um. Uh, I have everything I need, I think. Is there something I'm missing? Maybe it wants me to get fresh pumpkin jack bones? <clears throat> Here, let me eat. Uh, I have to brew a deadly herbicide. Okay, so... How do I do that, though? Did I even... Do I even have the watering can? Oh, there it is. All right, it will take some work to break through the Scarecrow's magical boom, but you're con confident in the mastery of your poisons. Potion of Blight. 
You let your breath and empty the poisonous vial into the container. The toxic fumes make your fingernails curl. Ew. A good amount of word water will dilute the poison to keep it from eating straight through the metal can. Pumpkin jack bone. You crush up the impish bone into fine powder. This potent fertilizer will spread the blight. You find a hefty stick to mix all the ingredients together inside the watering can. You know your work is done when the stick dissolves into mush in your hands. Nice. A withering can. Wither the ox's crops. Hell yeah. We are causing problems on purpose. Um, down this way, yes. Hey, I thought I told you to beat it. He raises his hoe and brandishes at it at you menacingly. You watch the sickness spreading up the stalks to the very tips of the tallest leaves. Vivid greens turn to diseased browns as the crops bend and droop. No, what is happening? Harvest Master, we had a deal. You promised my crops would never fail. My mom, 82F, told me, 12M, to do the dishes, 16, but I, 12M, was too busy playing Fortnite, free kills, so I, 12M, grabbed my controller, DualShock 4, and threw it at her, 138 kilometers per hour. She fucking died, and I, 12M, went to prison, 18 years. While in prison I, 12M, incited several riots, free, and assumed leadership of a gang responsible for smuggling drugs, cocaine, into the country. I, 12M, also ordered the assassination of several celebrities, Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley and Jeffrey Epstein, and PLA. Not the full <laughs> Reddit, am I the asshole? <laughs> am I the asshole stories are so funny. I love them. They're so good. They're so cursed. <laughs> The best way to cause problems. Exactly. Poisoning your crops. <laughs> I'm ruining your harvest. You won't have any food this winter. <laughs> Dreadfully sorry. It looks like my magic is broken. Not my fault. The ox throws himself to the ground, desperately raking the soil with his fingers. Wait, let's make a new deal, please. I sacrificed too much for this. A new deal? What is your offer? Anything you want, just bring my precious crops back to me. Anything, hmm? This is acceptable. Worm-like roots suddenly wrap around the ox's feet and begin dragging him into the soil. Wait, I didn't mean... The dust settles over the spot where the ox once stood as if nothing happened. Though the soil looks barren and diseased, a small sprout of leafy green crouches your eyes. Where the ox once stood, a green tendril has pushed its way through the earth. Excuse me. You watch a delicate blossom unfurl, revealing a stubborn, hard-shelled seed, the soul of the ox. Cool! I murdered him! And the family did not come back. <laughs> not really what I was intending to happen, but... <coughs> oh no, there they are! Standing at the front gate, the ox's missing wife and son blink in confusion, as if they had just burst forth from the earth themselves. Ma, what happened? Ah, welcome back. I suppose you don't remember much. He really did it, didn't he? That stupid festival prize was worth more to him than us. Where is he? Where is my husband? Don't fret. I've already set things straight. He won't be troubling you again, and you've got this nice fertile farm all to yourself now. My son and I worked ourselves to the bone for that horrible man. Thank you for lifting this curse. 
Just do me a favor and don't make any deals with suspicious scarecrows. Yay! We did it! Um. How nice. Um. Alright, so. I guess, um. All right, we'll we'll do this. I have All right, I need bug ichor from the swamp. I remember the thing that was holding me back was the lazy grass. I couldn't figure out that one. But we'll do we'll do this part then. I need to go back to the swamp anyway. That's that's where this quest is taking place. Um I could just go through here. Uh, the swamp. Excuse me. Um, All right, nice. We'll get we'll get one more dragonfly. Then I need All right, now I have all of this, so I can go back to the nurse now. Bloodsucker. Um, but I gotta remember where the nurse is. I don't fully remember. Oh, look at them. They love their little, their little moonstone. <coughs> Since we're just eating Hot Pockets for dinner today instead of breakfast for dinner, do you just want me to leave yours in the freezer or something so you can make it? Uh, yeah, just leave mine in the freezer and you guys can just make yours whenever you're ready to eat it rather than having to reheat it. Right. Yeah, you guys can just make it whenever you're ready. I'll need three milligrams of bug ichor extract, five grams of toxic thistle powder, and some lazy grass to numb the pain. You place a sloshing jar of Ikor into the nurse's hands. She inspects it suspiciously, but doesn't ask where it came from. All right. Toxic thistle. You snap off a few spiny thistles and pass them to the nurse. She is careful not to pick her, prick herself on the sharp ends. Um, and lazy grass. The nurse takes the dry grasses you have been so careful to keep intact and immediately crushes them into powder. The nurse nods at you, gathering all the ingredients into a small, hand-sized mortar. You hold your breath as she mashes everything into a slimy, stinky liquid. Not the most pleasant stuff, but I can assure you it beats growing lumps where no lump should be. Speak for yourself. Once you, once you, one you can have... Uh, speak for yourself. One can never have enough lumps. The nurse shrugs at you, sucking up the bubbling mixture into an oversized syringe. She gestures for you to hold out your arm. After stabbing into your flesh several times, she fails to find any veins with the point of the needle. Sorry, you seem to have some strange physiology. But I'll give it here. I'll do it. You seize the injector and jab it into your arm without further fuss. A cool sensation climbs to your fingertips. You doubt the medicine will have any effect, but at least it should make the nurse happy. 
There, I feel much better. Can I go inside now? Oh yes, yes of course, you should be immune to the plague for the time being. Just be quick, the leech is very busy. I see. The plague doctors of the, the 16th century would have loved this. <clears throat> Actually, it was the 14th century, but that's besides the point. Oh, hello. Speaking of plague doctors. Oh, the doctor slithers from one patient to another, checking off little boxes on a clipboard. From under her wide-brimmed hat, she appears to notice you enter, but pays you no mind. The leech is probably cool. Yeah, look, look. You guys can make yours. I'll make both of ours. Coffee has its grip on me. That's fair. You must be the leech. I was hoping you could help me find one of your patients. Do you have the symptoms? Crackling of bones, oozing of eyes, skin rot, perhaps a yellow liver? Let's get you examined. The leech extends her toothy snout, prodding your body and searching for some hidden, hidden malignancy. You slap her away with a swift palm. If it's sickness you're looking for, you won't find it on me. My dear, we are all sick with something. Whether it's a broken heart or broken arm, we suffer in one way or another. You peer through her tightly wrapped garments and see a damp darkness underneath. Despite the warmth in her words, there is a sense of hunger and urgency in her tone. I'm here to heal, to mend, to put all your troubles at ease. Now tell me, what ails you? Nothing that leeches can fix. <laughs> I told you already, I'm in perfect health. I'm here to find someone, a man who came here through, through here with a sprained ankle. Have the patients who come to me have twisted this or broken that? Before the pox sets in, that is. Can you be more specific? What does he look like? Oh, I'm... Hmm, I'm not sure. Well then, how do you expect me to help you? Come back to me when you know what you're looking for. You look about the sick house at the coughing, wheezing, bedridden souls. Perhaps some of them will be able to identify the missing husband. I miss that man with the beard. You don't know where that short fellow got to, eh? It's the beardy guy you're looking for. There was a fellow with dark hair, dark eyes. Their sleeping looks like they could use the rest. A husband? Yeah, he had a darker complexion than me. That's not saying much, my, dad, my guy. Can't find the, the short guy? Sorry, I can't help you. You don't know where that short fellow got to, eh? It's that beardy guy you're looking for. Well, do you have a better idea of exactly what you're looking for? Shorter than most. Dark in features. Wore a full beard. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that poor man now. He came in with a swollen ankle, but on his journey through the swamp, he must have contracted the plague. His condition declined rapidly, I'm sorry to say. In the end, there wasn't much I could do for him except make him comfortable. He's dead? What sort of sick house is this anyway? My condolences, really. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to doing what I can for the living. At least tell me his where his wife can collect his body. The nurse outside seemed to have trouble keeping track of them all. I'm sorry, that information is reserved for a next of kin. Judging by your physique, I wouldn't say you were related to the deceased in the slightest. The doctor turns away from the fr from you to prepare vials of medicine. Better return to the old woman in the swamp with the bad news. Oh no. Oh no, he died. <clears throat> he did. How unfortunate. That woman's not going to be happy. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I I don't know. We will find out soon enough. All right, well, let's go find the woman then. Oh yeah, coming after me, stick boy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, map. Okay, so we need to go, all right. 
I see where we gotta go. Do you have news of me husband? He should have been back from the sick house by now. You bow your head in condolences. I'm sorry to say that your husband has passed away. The leech said he fell ill with the plague. Rather than grief, an expression of mild annoyance crosses the woman's face. Oh, what a nuisance. You don't seem upset by the news. Well, he was getting on in years. It was bound to happen sooner or later. I just didn't think it would be some from... I didn't think it would be from some measly plague of all things. So, where is the fool now? I'm not sure. The leech wouldn't tell me. But her assistant mentioned having to dispose of the dead bodies out in the swamp. Uh, brimstone and bandersnatch. I know I'm already in your debt, sister. But can I ask you for another favor? I suppose I've already stuck my foot in this mess. What is it? There is an old circle of power just west of here. It served me well in my younger years, and I expect it's still got some juice left. I need to dust it off and fire it up again. I'd go do it myself, but by the time I get there, my poor husband's body would already be reduced to worm farts. What am I to do with the circle? You're a knowledgeable lass. The engravings on the obelisk should explain the rest. Uh, we're gonna resurrect the dead. Uh, that's fine by me. Okay. So I gotta cross here and then go down. Alright. <clears throat> so how we all doing right now? Y'all vibing? Y'all thriving? Y'all living and surviving? Oh, that's what this is for. You brush off a blanket of thick moss and lichen from the ancient magical pattern carved into the earth. The essence of power wakes at your touch, bringing a slight warmth to your fingertips. Four black stone obelisks surround the ritual spot. You'll need to scrape off more overgrown decay to read the ruin runic lettering engraved on their surfaces. The northern obelisk calls for proof of the dead. The afterlife is nothing if not bureaucratic. A death certificate from the leech would fit the bill. You're into the tooth of a dragon. You haven't seen any real dragon in years, but who knows what's out in this swamp? Alright. Okay. Alright, how do I craft this? Oh. I need blood, which I can get. I have some smoke pellets. Nice. All right, sorry about that. Um, I gotta get one more. There you are. Up. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I've gotten blood. Worker work. And then I should be able to craft the necromatic charm. Great. And then I need the Drake Fang, which I gotta figure out. I know how to find the drake. I don't know how to get his charm, though. Um, how to find how to get up to him, though. Okay, I see now. It's right, and then up <clears throat> through here. Okay, a sacrifice and then some shears. Mm. Okay, let's start here. I need, God damn it, more water. All right, fine, 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 fine. I need more water. All right, let's. Go get that then. All right. 
Embalming salts, how nice. Um... Nice. Set Sprite. Okay. So I've gotten that. So now I should be able to make this. Alright. And then I need... The paste. I need milk for that. Alright. So I need to make another jar. To get the milk for that, but then I also need the roast beef, so I need to make the spice. And then I need to get the mini morsel. All right. Let's go to... <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. So let's come up here. And then we can go into the field area, put down some traps, and that should give us the meaty morsels. Um, that's actually, yeah, the fields might be able to give us enough, I think. Wonderful. <clears throat> and now I can also... Go on. Wonderful. And now I can get the milk. And then I should be able to craft the snack refice. Alright, nice. Perfect. <clears throat> snack refice! Okay, cool. And now I just have to go back in here and I could go back to the swamp and then I could just lay that out and then attack the beast with sh shears all right to the swamp excuse me don't mind me I'm just I'm just a little tired Um, I'm going the wrong way. Whoopsie. Alright, let's go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go right up. Through the bodies.
Okay. So now I should be able to power up the swamp's obelisks other than the death certificate. Um, <clears throat> so let's go get the death certificate from the leech. That's over this way. The shadowy doctor prowls amongst the cots, eyeing the weakest patients with a dark hunger. She snaps a quivering tentacle at you as you approach. Not a step closer, who knows what sorts of disgusting maladies you might be carrying. Yes, yes, I'm a pox-ridden wrench, I know, but I need a death certificate from you. Specifically of the short-bearded man we spoke about, his wife is in no condition to roll her chair through the swamp, so she asked me to collect it for her. I don't simply give out death certificates to anyone claiming to be someone's aunt, grandmother, or friend. This is a legitimate operation. She turns her back to you, rummaging through a nearby medicinal closet. Now, where has that serum got to? Don't tell me you are already out. What's the matter? Out of stock? It's a shame you, you don't have the time to go out yourself. She tenses at your continued presence. What are you getting at? Medicine for that death certificate. I think that's a fair trade, don't you? You would barter when people's lives are on the line? Fine, I'll have your paperwork, you filthy degenerate. Clearly too angry to speak with you, she shoves a list of required medical supplies into your hands. Oh, mending poultice is easy to make. There. The leech stuffs the poultice into an unsanitary looking cabinet without a second glance. The leech takes the wings with a surprisingly delicate touch and lays them out carefully along the surface of a clear shelf. The leech inspects the barbs before placing each of them carefully into a velvet lined container alongside other excruciating looking instruments. I've run your errands, now I really must insist on that death certificate. There's no need to get prickly, I have your papers right here. The leech extends her moist arm and thrusts a poorly written note into your hands. You shake the mucus from the paper and try to decipher the loopy, illegible scribbles. You're not even sure that the leech spelled the poor man's name right, but you suppose it's better than nothing. Fa, next time I need a doctor's note, I'm better off forging a signature myself. <clears throat> Wonderful. So now we have everything for the obelisks. And we should be able to resurrect the man. I think that's what we're doing. Always remember to cover your mouth when you cough. <laughs> Good advice. Alright, let's move on. Bum, 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 bum. Um... Ah, great. I went the right way. Um, apothecary humors. You fill the bowl with an offering of anatomic liquids. The fluid slowly disappears as if being drained by some unseen thirst until only the wet residue remains. Tooth of a dragon. Drake Fang. You drop the reptilian fang into the stone basin with a heavy clunk. It spins like a top, emitting a high-pitched whine before shattering into what fine white dust. Death certificate. The humid swamp air has made the paper of the death certificate soft and damp as you drop it into the bowl and decompose before your eyes till nothing is left. Undead animation. You place the token of the undeath into the basin. It flutters like a candle for a moment before the shadowy umbra of the obelisk snuffs it out. 
With the final offering accepted, the obelisks surrounding the circle begin to hum. You can hear a strange melody playing through their discordant tones. The carvings on the ground burn with renewed energy, driving away the overgrowth. You're quick to step away as you feel vacuous force pull, the, pull at the circus, circle's center. I suppose that's done the trick. Let's see what the writing has to say for itself now. You rotate your head to read the glowing letters on the edge of the circle. Hmm. The place, place the vessel of the deceased, yada yada. Recite the revocation of necrodermis, blah blah. Apply the canopic ointment. <clears throat> right, seems straightforward enough. All I need to do now is fetch the body of that poor fool husband. He should be here in the swamp somewhere. Right, search the swamp for the husband's body. Uh, this must be where that nurse has been dumping the surplus of corpses. I'll need to take a closer look to find the right fellow. Similar, perhaps, but not the right body. This poor man of soul doesn't fit the description. Not the husband. This isn't the right one. Where on earth is that sinking body? You think I'd be able to find him among the dead here? You watch a particularly bloated fly land on a rotting camp, looking out of the muck. Its disgusting proboscis probes at the withered flesh. Two globular re red eyes slowly unglue themselves and swivel to boggle the insect. To boggle at the insect. <coughs> Excuse me. A huge slime-covered tongue lashes out and pulls the har hapless fly into a gaping, toothless maw, along with most of the slunken corpse. Well, I suppose that explains where my misplaced man went. Bro, can it be? Has a lovely young morsel wandered its way into my palace? He called this filthy bog a palace. He throws his head back, shaking the swamp with burbling laughter. Smaller fingers and newts, smaller frogs and newts scurry out of the way to avoid being crushed by his enormous bulk. Har har har, wouldn't you? This place is a veritable bounty of insects and my subjects have such healthy appetites, so they will all grow big and strong. I'd eat you too, but that head of yours looks much too hard. I prefer my food to be nice and tender. Uh, look. You and perchance have seen an old man pass through here, have you? About yay high, full beard, deadish. The frog taps his finger against a log, granting an impossible, impossibly large grin. Oh yes, I do believe I've seen that chap. He had such a delectable aroma and fall off the bone ribs. But I'm sorry to say that once something goes down the hatch, it never sees the light of day again. We'll see about that. I'm sure I could come up with some desserts for you. Frog rolls his eyes around as if daring you to try something. I need to make more digestive tablets. <clears throat> All right. I have newt. Okay. So how do I get the newt then? I don't remember. Oh, hello. Um, I know I have to... Cut down a rotting stump. Is it bait stick? Okay. I do have enough of that then. But I have to find a newt first. Because that's one of the ones that... I can't believe you remember that it's the bait stick. Why do I smell pasta? That's a problem. Maybe I'm just smelling garlic. Um... Anything? <sighs> oh, there's the rotting stump.
There we go. Okay, so now I should be able to make the digestive tablets. <clears throat> Fun fact, I am Newt isn't actually a, um, well, an eye of a newt. Like, it's not an eye of a reptile. It's actually the name of a plant. Um... The frog rolls his eyes around, as if daring you to try something. Digestive tablets. You wrap a juicy looking grub around the medicine, medicinal tablets and offer it up to the frog king. Your majesty, I really must find the whereabouts of that gentleman. Perhaps a small tribute will persuade you to loosen your tongue. The frog grubs down the gulps down the tantalizing meal without a thought. Ah, delectable gift. Thank you, my pretty. Now I already told you where. His nostril flare for a moment, then he sneezes, sending specks of wet mucus flying. The frog's throat suddenly expands, filling with gas. The belch that erupts from its lips resonates so loudly that the entire swamp ceases to its buzzing. You avert your eyes with the noise and smell the frog's explosive eruption almost knock you off your feet. Great Glinda's ghost, what a stench! The frog wobbles on its legs, looking thoroughly emptied. He teeters before rolling his huge back back into the swamp with a thunderous splash. You Spot the slippery body of the husband floating in the bog water. Luckily, he seems to be missing some bits and pieces, so he should feed felled up quite nicely. Fold up quite nicely. Stuff him in your satchel. <laughs> we just stuffed a dead body into our bag. Um, you're very autism indeed. Can we look at it? Yeah, we can look at my inventory. Oh, it's not in there. It doesn't count as an item because I can't craft with it. <sighs> Alright. The circle of power is ready and waiting for its necromantic purpose. Corpse. With considerable effort, you unfold the husband's decaying body from your satchel and slap it down <laughs> into the middle of the circle. Invisible shackles wrap around the corpse's limbs and pull its spread eagle against the ground. Strange mist rises from the obelisks, casting everything into a sickening green light. Slowly but surely, the corpse begins to levitate off the ground. It rotates to face each obelisk one by one. Oh, get on with it. I haven't got all day. You give the rotting head a good kick as it passes by you. With a gasp of stale air, the body drops to the ground. Suddenly, it bolts upright. Ugh. Speak to the zombie husband. Ah, oh, shit. Well, hello there. Uh, you caused me a lot of trouble, you know that? And the reanimated corpse claws at his throat. Oh, sorry, wait a moment. Near your feet, you see a disembodied tongue flopping about on the ground like a worm. You scoop it up quickly and toss it into the man's gaping mouth. Though he moves his jaw, his lurching voice seems to emanate from someplace beyond. Murderer. What? I am not. You were quite dead when I found you. No, Leech murdered me. He clutches at his hollow chest as if trying to feel his heart beating. Gave me a plague, drained my blood. Leech murdered others. He swings a limp arm towards the body filled bog. I knew there was something awful stink about that sick house. What sort of doctor infects their own patients? Check her office, find proof. Don't you worry, I'll make sure that parasite gets what's coming to her, but you should head back home. Your wife is worried half to death about you. He turned longingly over his shoulder. You can hear his vertebrae popping. Yes, I leap. As he shambles into the choking mist, he gives you a crooked nod of thanks. Cool. Um, well, that's nice. Let me just make that real quick, because that mosquito really wanted me for some reason. Um, Alright, let's go to the sick house then. Oh my eye. Oh my me. <sighs> <sighs> wow. 
While the leech is busy with her patients, you rifle through the contents of the various cabinets in her office, mostly dried herbs and potions. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. That is, until you notice a suspicious looking bookcase set against the wall. The books are all fake, just chopped down spines glued to a solid plank. Your fingers race across the medical titles and quickly find a loose volume. With a click of a switch, the whole bookcase swings open to reveal a secret compartment. Your heart jumps at the sight. Racks upon racks of bottled blood are arranged like fine wines. Each vessel meticulously catalogs the name, description, and age of its source. It looks like that thirsty slug's been sapping the living for years. On a nearby table, you spy a decanter half filled with ruby red liquid. You wonder whose blood it contains. Hmm, a dash of salt would remind that slimy worm that there's worse things out there than bloodsuckers. Uh. I do have some embalming salt in my... You sprinkle a, sprinkle a generous amount of embalming salt collected from the graves of the leech's victims into the decanter. As the salt dissolves into the bloody cocktail, you hear the telltale squelching of the good doctor's approach. What are you doing? Can't you see this is my private office? I already helped you enough, so there's no reason you ought to be here. She hastily shuffles you out of the room. Now get out. This place is only for the sick. You're certainly right about that. You walk just out of sight before doubling back to hide behind a withered get-well bouquet. You peer at the vessel the vexed leech as she slithers around her office checking every cabinet and locker for tampering she mutters something expletive about nosy old women <coughs> satisfied she sighs with relief and reaches to pour herself a glass from the tainted decanter ah oh, the that addition of black fever adds a certain nutty quality maybe it will pair well with an infusion of peat moss palsy in the next batch Shakes a sip, waiting just a moment before throwing her head back and guzzling it all down. Mmm, lovely, sharp flavor, full body too. Suddenly, the leech snaps to attention. Her limbs dart out, with a writhing un and with uncontrollable gestures. She stabilizes herself against the table as sweat pools on her brow. The decanter shatters against the floor in an explosion of gas. Yeah, I'm salt. I'm salting her. Salt in the leech. What's happening? The leech spasms as tendrils of ghostly spirits begin to suck the moisture from her body. You watch as she dwindles in size, shrinking like some horrible raisin. You inspect the mummified worm, pressing it between your fingers lightly. Drained by the very spirit she was supposed to be healing. In your fingertips, you make out the faintest heartbeat, the soul of the leech. Nice. I don't believe it. This was happening right under my nose the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I salted her drink. <clears throat> so that's three of the four souls that we've gotten. Um. Last one is the bear. All right, so I think I'm going to take a quick little break um, before continuing on to the bear. Stream will probably be shorter today uh, by a little bit, but I'm going to go take a break and go get something to eat, um, and then I'll be back to continue this. I'm going to make break a little longer than normal, uh, probably 30 minutes instead of 20, just so I can, you know, do what I got to do, because uh, I'm sick and it takes me a minute. Um, so yeah, go get something to eat, go get something to drink, and then we will be right back with the bear quest.
And we are back. Sorry about how long it took. <laughs> Hot pockets are lava, you're right. Although, pro tip apparently, if you stick your completely frozen Hot Pockets immediately into an air fryer oven for 20 minutes, they actually won't come out tasting like lava. They will be perfectly temperatured for you to immediately slap them on your plate and start eating. <laughs> So yeah, <clears throat> it was pretty great, um, but it took me 20 minutes to get there. So, you know, <laughs> that's why it took so long because I got the, it took me like five minutes to prep them, 20 minutes to cook them. And then by the time I finished eating, I only had, by the time I started eating, I only had like three minutes left on the clock and I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> so yeah, we are back now. <laughs> Hello, Desert. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Um, I remember where I gotta go. Oh, I gotta go there. We're playing which way? Uh, yeah, in there. <laughs> Goodbye, stick bitch. Good, I'm glad you're doing well. It's been a minute since I've seen you in stream, so. I hope I hope you're fair and all right that the days have been treating you good. I'm diseased, so don't mind my my croaking voice. Don't I sound absolutely incredible? I bet I sound so amazing. But yeah, we had hot pockets for dinner. It was pretty great. <laughs> And yeah, it was an early dinner, but that's okay. I was hungry enough. I know I'm sick because I get hungrier than normal. I don't know why my appetite just gets way more ravenous whenever I'm diseased. Which I mean, it's better than like not having an appetite at all. But like at the same time, if you have the stomach bug, uh, it's not great. Because then you're hungry and throwing up. Penelope, why are you trying to go on top of the PlayStation? <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm back at the fields. I am unsure where I need to go. What's your guys' favorite flavor of Hot Pockets? I like the pepperoni ones. What about y'all? Do y'all prefer the cheese ones? I know there are... are bacon egg sausage hot pockets which i think are disgusting but like they exist hmm yeah Oh, <clears throat> so I have to go through the well? Hmm, interesting. I didn't think I would have to go into the well to get to this location. I would have never have guessed. But also, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. There is unfinished business in that well. I just didn't think this would be the unfinished business. <clears throat> Hello. 
Hello, Brioche. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're vibing. I hope you had a good break with the rest of us. I hope you're resting, stinky. Hope you're you're resting your achy joints. Your old person joints. We both feel like old people. It's okay. We could be old together. Absolutely archaic. Just fossils. Why did it want me to go to the well? It was like, oh, go into the well. And I'm like, why? Why? <clears throat> For what purpose did it want me to go into the well? Don't mind me adjusting in my seat. Oh, that's where I'm supposed to go. Like, short path. Okay, I see. I understand now. Not up. There. I'm here. Yeah, soot sprite. I don't know what the soot sprite is used for, but <clears throat> I have them. I have multiple. Um, we could probably finish the bear quest today before we have to call it, um, I think. I love that it starts like crying and like giggling and, and gurgling like a, a baby and then you just chop it down with an axe. You just murder this mushroom baby with legs that's running around trying to play a game with you. You're like, nah, come here, bitch. Here's fucking Johnny, I guess. Uh -uh. Oh, we're back here now. Hey, where do you think you're going? Yeah, no one but us soldiers are allowed outside the Lakeshore camp. Get out of my way. I have urgent news of your quartermaster. I need to speak with your sergeant. Urgent? Only thing that's urgent is the line for the latrine. Or the captain hasn't had his drink. That's right, Captain Bear is in a right foul mood. You can't come in unless you want a good thrashing. The guard almost has to shout over the, de the clattering din coming from inside the camp. You heard him, it's dangerous in there. Wouldn't have the heart to let a frail old gl granny like you near the beast. One guard turns to the other with a conspiratorial shrug. Yeah, but who are we to say that what's good for her health? Oh yeah, you're right. We might be convinced to uh, look the other way if we were if we was fairly compensated. Right, fairly compensated, of course. We'd be sticking our necks out after all. You carefully press three heavy gold coins into the palm of the waiting guard. There, I expect you two could divide them evenly amongst yourselves. Right, one for you and two for me. 
What? You mean two for me and one for you? I'm the one who does all the rail guarding around here. You still owe me for that game of dice you lost. You cheated me. Give me them coins. The two guards fall into fist fisticuffs and roll onto the bushes, leaving the gate to the camp wide open. <clears throat> oh, damn. They're all dead. As you cautiously approach, the bear drains the last of his enormous tankard and smashes it against the head of a nearby soldier, knocking the helpless man to the ground. And then I walloped him just like that, so next time I catch any of you cowards turning tail, I'll skewer you like a fish and leave your guts for the gulls. Suddenly noticing that his drink has gone dry, the bear bellows to the skies. More mead, you yellow-bellied worms! More drink! Bring me my delicious honey mead! The soldier is taking o cover nearby exchanged nervous glances at each other, none wanting to confront the bear. There is no more honey mead. The bear wipes a strand of drool from his sagging lips and his blear bleary eyes slowly focus on you. A mocking smirk spits his face as he waves at, at you with his great spiked mace. Say, now that's a funny looking helmet, soldier. I never tell you the time I crushed the bucket-headed barbarians of the western mountains. You said that now is a good time to leave the bear to his ramblings rather than make yourself an unfortunate prop in the, his war stories. The bear kicks an empty tankard at you as you retreat back into the camp. That's right, go get me more mead, you good-for-nothing slaggard. Take cover! Uh, I got a soldier. This one might be faking it, but he's very convincing. The soldier can't decide which is more dangerous, abandoning his post or standing close to the bear. Doing his job, but he doesn't seem all that happy about it. We don't want him to find us. Damn. Sergeant. The fre frenetic looking officer shouts hurried other orders at whoever will listen. But most of the camp's soldiers are busy cowering or knocked out cold. Man the gates, you over there, secure the perimeter. We need to hold out a little longer. Sir, we're running out of man. Where's that damn shipment of honey? You step over an unconscious foreman to address the man in charge. I might be able to answer that question. Who the- who let this old bat into the camp? I found your quartermaster. He's having a bit of car trouble on the road. I'm afraid your shipment isn't going to be here anytime soon. What? Oh, curse my rusty britches? Without the honey and other supplies, we can't make the honey mead. <coughs> the bear's going to flatten the whole camp when he finds out. The camp looks half flattened already. What's all this ruckus about? Well, the bear is the greatest warrior there ever was, which is grand and all when we're fighting the enemy. But once we set up camp, he likes to use us poor souls as playthings to reenact his conquests. And the only thing the bear loves as much as fighting is drinking. Guzzles up so much honey mead, we have to brew it right here in the camp just to keep it up. He points to a squat-looking device not, uh, tucked near some tents, a portable brewery. Without that shipment of ingredients, I don't see how we can ever calm the bear down. He'll smash us all to pace before the sun sets. Let me take a look at this brewery of yours. If the bear is so in love with... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. With brawling and boozing, then perhaps it's about time he received a dose of his own medicine. You inspect the brass contraption. A tank here, a hopper there. The bitter smell of alcohol is infused into the well-worn metal. Despite the needlessly complicated dials and tubing, at the end of the day, the brewery is just a really fancy cauldron. This seems simple enough. I should be able to concoct just the potion for your troubles. The rattled sergeant shrugs his soldiers at you. <clears throat> sure, if you think it'll help, but you'll need to feel the darn thing first. Our supplies are a mess, so you'll have to figure it out on your own. You open up the brewery to inspect its complicated dinners. Alright, I need a cinder box and five jars of water all right all 
Alright, let's craft the wa the jars first. And then we can... Rodent lard. Okay, which I can get by... All right, let me see if I can. Man, they really are struggling, aren't they? <clears throat> That's okay. They could suffer. <coughs> Pardon me. I am struggle busting. Yes, okay. Now I have rodent lard. Okay, so now I have the cinder box. And I just need the five things of water. Which I can get by going over to the well and filling up. Um... Okay. Yep, right down here. And then there's water in <clears throat> in there. Yep, right there. Perfect! Now we've got everything we need. My neck is so stiff. Oh god. I have to wonder if I slept wrong. what I could go for? I could go for a nice cup of tea. That's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, I kind of really want a cup of tea. But I'm also too lazy to brew it. <laughs> it's a problem. I, I should brew it. I'll probably brew some tonight, but at the same time, I'm like, damn, that sounds really good right now. A nice cup of tea with some honey. <clears throat> Okay. So now I have that. You slosh cool, clear water into the brewery's main tank. Not the fine, fi not the best base for potion brewing, but you want to preserve that honey mead flavor. You open up the brewery um, twig. You snap kindling into pieces and scatter it into the bottom compartment of the brewery. Should be fuel enough for the job. <coughs> Cinder box. With the... Heat of the cinder box, you set the stove chamber of the brewery alight. It will bring the tank to a rolling boil. With the hiss of steam and the sound of boiling water, the rattling brewery is ready for the next step in the process. I'm stuck at a heavily Christian ready send a, a heavily Christian wedding send a rescue party. Alright, bet I'll be there in like twelve days. <laughs> <clears throat> of course I'll need honey for the mead. That quartermaster said he was coming back from the apiary in the field, so I best try there. Then I'll need a proper magical binder and a token of the bear to sell, seal the spell something in this camp ought to do the trick. Um, I need honey, a torn teddy bear, and a metamorphosis elixir. Um, a metamorphosis elixir. 
Oh, I can just craft that now? Oh, cool. That's nice. Oh, wonderful. Um. Uh, investigate the bear's tent. Through the open tent flap, you catch a glimpse of, a pil of pillage, trinkets, and treasures scattered about the spacious interior. You surmise that one of these precious objects might contain enough magical essence to use as the token of the bear. Your eyes have only mo a moment to linger upon the giant fur-lined bed before a hand pulls the door flap shut. The surgeon gives you a disappointing glare as he ushers you away. Hey, you can't go in there. This is the bear's personal tent. You know the kind of hell that would break loose if he finds out that someone's been snooping? Don't worry, I'll be careful. It seems like your men are keeping him distracted anyway. You glance over at the bear as he tosses aside a soldier like a sack of potatoes. No way, no how. If you think this is bad, just wait until you, he finds out there's no more honey mead. <laughs> if you're so afraid of, stop, of that stopping brute, why don't you just slip away into the night? Surely it would protect, prolong your life a little. And abandon all my friends? We soldiers gotta stick together. <coughs> it's our only chance. If only there was some way to stand up to the bear. A thought seems to cross the sergeant's mind as he notices the potions and baubles hanging about your belt. Say, you're good with magical doodads and what's it's right? What if you made some sort of protective charm or talisman? Then I could maybe have a chance against that monster without getting my head stoved in. If I make you a protective talisman, will you let me into this tent? I suppose I wouldn't have much to worry about if you did. All right. A wicked gemstone. Dog hair. Okay, which means I need the sporaphic. Alright. God, more water! Uh, everything needs water, apparently. Um... I'm here, you. Okay. So. Uh, I can make the jar. And have the co bag. <laughs> and get more water. Damn. Alright, well. All right, let's see. There's also this fire here. Um. Okay, so now I have that. I can come out here, get the water. I think I have enough of meat. Uh -uh. Um. Man, this one quest has me running all sorts of errands. And that guy doesn't have a... A spigot in his yard, so I have to go into the well. All right, up in that. Cool. Um, all right, so now I have that, which can now give me that. <clears throat> I also need moo juice. Ah, damn. Okay. Okay, so 
And then I can also get the embers up there too. So... Also, welcome back from Adland, everybody. I hope you guys uh, didn't have to get too off track by ads. I hope you guys are, are all back and not too disturbed, not too perturbed. Ugh. Eat it. Wonderful. Oh my gosh, there's so many soot sprites. I got a really lucky spawn, I guess. Um, then I can make that. Great. So, I have that all settled. I also need two wicker works. Alright, and then I need magic paste, which I can get from the farm. Um, what's the farm is down here, so I might as well just walk that way. <clears throat> Thankfully, I have, like, most of the ingredients on hand, so it wasn't, like, too much of a fetch quest. It was just mostly too much, like, a fetch quest. God, not the fucking cursed-ass cabbage again. Um. Cow should be in here. Look at all these eggs. Mmm, eggs. Um. Alright, now I should be able to make the paste. Which will then allow me to make the protective talisman. Yay! Now I have that and I can progress. Alright, so I'll go up now. <coughs> And also acquire at the apiary. Because I'm already here. I might as well, right? <sighs> to the apiary. Heidi ho, I'm afraid we're close for the season. Closed, but I need some of your honey right away. Sorry, our supplies was cleaned out just a little while ago. Funny little man with a cart. You missed him. Yes, I met him. He's the quartermaster for the bear, but he had a bit of an accident on the road. I need to collect some more honey for the lake short camp. The bear? Well, that explains why the quartermaster put, purchased so dang much. I heard that lumbering bully would steal the nectar from a larva if it sued him. My poor bees have already worked themselves half to death for that order, and they don't have any honey left. <coughs> um, I wish I could do something to help you, but her the only honey left in this entire apiary is Her Majesty's personal reserve. Her Majesty? Why, my sweet spring flower, the jewel of my crown, the golden sun of my... Yes, yes, get on with it. My beloved queen, she's as lovely as she is wise and resides over her flower kingdom. A shrill voice pierces the meadow and sends chills down your spine. Slave, where is my dinner? I order you to bring me the finest sunflowers. R right away, my love. And make it pretty this time. I don't want another one of your of your dandelion bouquets in like some common wasp. Yes, my sweet. Hmm, I think I'd better have an audience with this queen myself. 
All right, well, I guess I'm speaking to the queen bee now. Let me get a smoke bomb. Generally well-mannered, but can be hostile when irritated. Oh, she's pretty. The regal insect looks down her curled nose at you scornfully. That fool beekeeper is supposed to stop the rabble from trampling my delicate garden. Good help is so hard to find, isn't it? And I suppose you've come to land a hand? No, I don't think so. What do you want, little beetle? You seem like a very busy woman, so I won't waste your time. I need honey, your best honey. She tilts her long neck back and lets out a buzzing laugh. Ha, huh, do you think I simply give my carefully cultivated riches to just any commoner? Do you have any idea how much time and energy is spent managing this colony? Everyone always wants something, but no one ever wants to work for it. Tch. In a rustle of petals, the beekeeper comes running over, holding out an assortment of beautiful prairie flowers. My darling sweetheart, I offer you the finest meadow flowers. I hope you find these to your liking. Is this is this marigold? You wax-brained fool. You know I despise the stuff. How many times must I repeat myself? Get out of my sight, all of you. My love, I have wronged you. Let me try again. You follow the beekeeper a short distance away while he busies himself picking more flowers. She seems to be in a foul mood. Does she always treat you like this? Well, yes, but it's really usually my own fault. Sometimes when she gets, re her, gets her venom up... A little bit of smoke and soothing herbs calms her right down. Smoke, you say? I'm sure I could come up with something to even out her mood. <coughs> Alright. God damn it! <laughs> More fucking water? Shit, okay. Um... <laughs> Y'all, I hate it here. Hmm. <laughs> All right, this I can make now. I can make the smoke pellet now. Let's see. I can make the witch spice. And then I have... I have to make this now. Shit. Oh, that's actually really helpful. That is just like reusable. I might want to keep that for myself. Because that's super helpful. Alright, let's go get the water. But should be fair, it's it's fairly close by. So it's not too big of a deal. All I gotta do is come around this way. There we go. For how many times I need water, I might as well just like craft a fuck ton of it, right? Okay. So now we're back in here. <clears throat> there we go. You sneak, do you honestly believe that your little puff of achoo smoke can can the queen fans herself lightly as the world begins to push and pull all around her. <sighs> Does anyone else feel a little hot? Anyways, as I was saying, you can't just... Just... <clears throat> the sparkling sun bears down on the queen like a warm summer's embrace. My, look at all these beautiful colors. Have they always been so bright? The queen bee stretches her arms across the sea of flowers, brushing the tips of the petals carefully. She arches her limbs through the myriad of colors swinging about her head. It's gorgeous! Oh, oh, and what's that delicious spell? Cracking into the waxen walls of her hive, the queen pulls out a golden honeycomb. She proceeds to messily stuff the honey into her face. 
Delectable. Oh, it's so good. You simply have to try some, my dear. I've never tasted anything so delicious in my life. She offers up a sticky handful to you. Why, thank you, my queen. She seems half asleep, but still feasting on honey. Well, that's good, at least. The beekeeper has concerned himself with a floral arrangement. They get so agitated and they come after you. They're like, nah, come here. I'm going to sting you. <laughs> All right. So I've got the protective amulet, which actually I might make myself for myself in this game because that's very useful. The fact that it could just like make you immune to harm. That's super helpful, but... I'll make it for myself later when I get into the farther parts of the game. Because as of right now, everything seems pretty easy to avoid. I'm mostly thinking about, like, the pumpkin guys. Because they're, or, the, like, the, um, little, uh, gnome dudes. Because they are pretty, uh, pretty aggressive, I think. All right. Let's get back to the, uh, camp, shall we? <sighs> Excuse me. Okay, so... If I make you a protective talisman, will you let me into this tent? <clears throat> Here you go. Here. This ought to shield you from harm for a time. He grins nervously as he puts the charm around his neck. Then he dobbers himself in the face with... Then he... Clobbers himself in the face with his own fist. Wow, you weren't kidding! Though that's nowhere near the kind of punishment the bear can dish out. I better find some more stuff to test it out with, then I'll give that bear a piece of my mind. He stumbles off into the camp to find other objects to try against this newfound protection, leaving the bear's tent unattended. Wonderful. Into the tent. Alright. Oh. Oh. Dear trifle, surely that'll do it. Okay, perfect. Exit the tent. So now I should have everything I need <clears throat> to literally kill the bear. Um, the frothing basin at the brewery stands ready for the right ingredients. Honey! As you squeeze the honeycomb with your bare hands, thick rich honey slowly oozes into the brewery's tank. Too sweet for your taste, but then this potion is not for you. <coughs> Metamorphosis elixir. You ladle out a good portion of the writhing tar-like substance into the brewery. To be safe, you add a little bit more, just for texture. And you pause before t dropping the tattering play thing, tattered plaything into the brewery. A glint in its button eye reminds you of something, but the thought soon evaporates from your mind. You overturn your palm, and then stuff the and the stuffed bear splashes down into the concoction. It floats sadly for a moment before becoming waterlogged and disappearing under the surface. With the addition of the final ingredient, the brewing equipment is sealed and set to work. Steam hisses from rivets, and its swollen metal body clanks and rattles. Before long, the waggling fingers of the gauges and dials settle down, indicating that the brew is complete. You give a quick sniff test and recoil at the sickeningly sweet vapors. You push an empty wooden keg under the contraption spigot and crank the release valve. The brewery strains under the pressure and fills the keg with a chunky oozing fluid. May not be the finest honey mean around, but hopefully that great ragging galoot won't stop to notice the difference.
Um. Ah, Captain, I brought you more honeyed mead. <clears throat> the bear swipes up the tankard with his massive paw and tosses the contents into his slaving maw without hesitation. He licks his chops, savoring the peculiar flavor. With a sudden jerk, he bears down on you with suspicion. Say, this tastes kind of funny. What did you do, soldier? It's a uh, new recipe. I thought you might enjoy something with a little more sting in it. You know I hate new things. I'll teach you to mess with my favorite brew, you hayseed. The bear's upon you with frightening speed. He raises his huge mace in his paw skyward and you brace for the impact. With an equal measure of speed, the sergeant leaps between the crashing maze and your head. You peer through your fingers as a great clang resounds through the camp. The bear roars furiously as his blow, blow is magically repelled from the sergeant's talisman. The mace goes spinning out of his paw and falls into the lake with a great splash. He gapes, dumbfounded, as the sergeant stands before him completely unharmed. Ha, that'll teach you to pick on us, you big oaf. This has been a long time coming. The sergeant whacks his finger at the bear. Who do you think you are, huh? You think you're big and tough with your fancy feather hat and your big honking club? Well, look at you now. The camp soldiers gather to witness and stun and stunned awe. Miraculously, the bear seems to shrink in the face of the sergeant's onslaught. If it was up to me, you'd be dishonorably, dishonorably discharged for disorderly contact. You're a disgrace to the uniform. You're no captain of mine. With fear welling up in his eyes, the bear shrinks and shrinks until he's reduced to the size of a small cat. And another thing, I, uh, <clears throat> what's happening? In place of the bear's drunken grimace is the stitched smile of a doll's grin. Two button two button eyes to stare back at the disapproving faces surrounding the little plush toy. The sergeant takes a step back to reveal the small shape of a stuffed teddy bear where the brute once stood. You tra your transformative potion has finally done its work. Gee, I guess I overdid it. He scratches his head in befuddlement, but seems genuinely relieved. Hey, Sarge, I guess that means you're in charge now, right? Oh, yeah, I guess it does. Well, what are you all standing around for? This camp's a mess. Let's get to work. You pick up the dim diminutive doll and brush some sand out of its fur. As you inspect it further, its head lolls to face you. For within the glossy surface of its button eyes, you can barely make out a tiny grimson flame, the trap soul of the bear. This ought to be what the old goat is after. I hope he's happy. The souls of the bear, leech, snake, and ox jostle in your satchel with fearful energies. That's that then, but I better get back home to the goat before he ransacks the rest of the place. <laughs> Hell yeah. Alright, return to the goat. All right, let's get back to the goat then. Excuse me. Um, up this way? Oh, <coughs> I think it's up this way. Um, yeah, it's d actually down here. Okay, this should hopefully. Yep, that's it. Back home. <laughs> All right. Um, where's the goat? Oh, the goats in the shrine. Okay, we can go back into the shrine then. That's not a big deal. Okay. Oh, it's dark in here.
The goat rears its head at the sight of you, its hoofs pound the ground excitedly. Most excellent, I can sense the spirits, the presence of the spirits about you. You must have captured the souls I have asked for. No small task, I can tell you that. Just what do you plan to do with them? Oh, this and that, nothing you must concern yourself with. That What's important is that you are one step closer to fulfilling your contract with me. Just go ahead and place them in the shrine there. I'll take care of the rest. The goat shakes its head towards a carved relief at the back of the room, grinning in a horrible way that no goat should. <clears throat> As you bring the stuffed bear close to the carved stone relief in the wall, it spontaneously bursts into flames in your hands, burning away until only a harsh red stone remains. The stone zips out of your grasp and straight into the socket on the wall, busting like some angry insect. You are buffeted by flashes of the bear's wrath, drunken, roaring, cowering bodies, splintering woods, the smell of honey. <clears throat> as with the first the mummified husk of the leech turns to ash as you bring it close to the wall leaving only a glowing orb in its place images of the leech slither in your mind the prick of a needle the drip 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 of draining fluid soothing words restless sleep prismatic colors flash through your head as the thought of the snake secrets lapped up by a forked tongue whispers beneath the sound of festivities the ox brings with him the overbearing heat of the midday sun, the salty tang of sweat in the soil, suffering, sacrifice, solitude. Nice. You step away from the shrine and its smoldering stone, your bird and sun, and feel much lighter. Beside you, the sleeping maiden stirs in her slumber, but does not wake. Now then, you've had a very long day. Why don't you get some rest? <clears throat> Tomorrow we shall pick up bright and early. Yes, I am quite tired. I see. And we are back here. All right, let's talk to the goat again. Ah, good morning, my swamp lily. I trust you slept well. Like the dead. You stretch out your back, making a sound like snapping twigs. Well, no time to dilly-dally. I sense the next four souls on our list. You must travel east out of the forest and towards civilization. Ugh, I hate crowds. Well, it can't be helped. You must seek out these souls in the village, the market, the docks, and the graveyard. <clears throat> hmm, the graveyard might at least be a reprieve from the chattering townsfolk. All right, goat, I'll bring you your souls. You seem much more reasonable today. Have a change of heart, perchance. If these next four are anything like the last, they'll get what's coming to them. I'm glad we have reached an understanding. Alright. Sounds good. Sounds good. The cat in the market, the rat in the graveyard, the fish in the docks, and then the... Uh, what in the what? <laughs> the ram in the village. Okay. Makes sense. Um, so I'm guessing that's what these are going to be. This is probably the market over here. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go here. Sure. I think I think this is a good place to start. Probably have to go down the well, honestly, cuz I feel like I've explored most of the areas um pretty thoroughly. Aha. Yippee! Oh my goodness. Hello, multiverse. How are you? Uh, thank you for the yippee. We are 
We are making our way. Alright, so to the village. That's where we need to go now. I'm lurking and cleaning my room. Oh, that sounds fun. I mean, well, not fun, but that sounds like a, a, a good thing to pursue today. I hope that it's going well and I wish you luck. Um, this game looks very pretty. It is gorgeous. I recommend it. Please, please play it if you don't, if you can. Like, if you have the chance to play it, play it. It's so good. I'm having a blast. It's just a really fun game. I, I definitely like it. If you don't like fetch quests, though, very much, like if you hate gameplay like that, it might be a bit, excuse me, a bit much. Um, but I really like the crafting and questing element of it. It's it's very pleasant. My trowel can probably these. Am I stealing stones? Oh, I got a nail. Rat's nest. Pickpocket. Wants what's yours. Thief, that's mine. Yeah, asshole. You can't do shit. Nice. Sheepdog. This anxious little dog attempts frantically to get the town's guard attention as they stand watch in front of the smoking ruins of a burned down shop. Please, you have to listen to me. My friend's missing. The guard stifles a yawn, annoyed at having to work. Uh, yeah, and what's your friend look like? The sleeves of the sheepdog's oversized sweater flail while comically. She's about yay tall, wears a green vest, has black wool. So she's one of them sheep, huh? Probably got lost, you know? Them types ain't too bright. She didn't get lost, she's gone missing. Her wool shop was burnt down on purpose. Can't you smell it in the air? Calm down, sir, we're investigating the situation, but I'm sure this fire was a simple accident. I bet your friend just left the kettle on or something. Why don't you check with the ram in the town square? If anyone knows where that lost sheep is, it's probably him. How can you say that? Everyone knows that ram hates the black sheep. Look at those footprints. I bet his goons had something to do with it. Listen, you're starting to get on my nerves. Just leave this to the professionals, all right? He runs away from the dog. He turns away from the dog and goes back to doing absolutely nothing. Professional indeed. They couldn't find a fish in a frying pan. I better look into this funny business myself. The ram. All right, bet. Nothing to see here, ma'am. Move along, move along. Come here, set sprite. Nice. Pushes him out of the way. Come here. I collect every set sprite I see. Crap, the best mummy out there. Yes, hello, Recrow. How are you? I am diseased. Don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't not mind that my voice is a little raspy. Pocket's right for the pluck-in. We're playing Witchwood today. Having a, having a half-decent time here. I'm stealing stones from the road. <laughs> oh my goodness, hello, Miss Strange. How are you? Rick, cure him. <laughs> You're a doctor, right? <laughs> I shall cast the disease away. Be gone, sickness. I shall whip out my dance and moves. I mean, I'd happily see your dance and moves, Penelope. Don't go down there. <clears throat> I'm killing God. I'm writing some promo content. Oh, I see. <laughs> They're the same thing. They're the same thing. Strange, I feel like you'd like this game. I don't know. Something about this game seems like it's right up your alley. Um. I 
At first glance, this looks like a neglected shack long ago fallen into disrepair. But your canny gaze reveals its construction to be beyond the ravages of time. Standing overlooked, yet constant until properly disrupted. Running your nail along the grain of one of the na nailed up boards proves to be just a dis the disruption it was waiting for. Nice. Cat, disinterested in the lowly fares of humans. This cat deserves a treat. Ah! Stone gargoyle. Plunked down unceremoniously in this darkened corner and seemingly grumpy about it. He has a scarf on. I like his scarf. I know, someone recommended it to me as a page. <laughs> I've had to play it. Uh, just need to... Need a silly on my other monitor while I work. You are the nominated silly. Congratulations, hell yeah! I'm also the the very low energy silly. It's a very chill stream today because I'm again I'm sick of some dogs. So apologies if I seem low energy. Um, it's because I don't have it. <laughs> but I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to be be a silly little guy despite that. Um, Let's see. Uh, and we just got into a uh, second section of this game, so... I think we're nearing the end. I think we're, like, at just shy of the halfway point. What the fuck is that? It's a mimic! <laughs> Nothing suspicious about that chest whatsoever. Why? Look, why he has such big legs? Oh my god! <laughs> I killed him. Oh, Mimic's toe! Ew. <laughs> Maybe you're a low energy, but seeing you shall fill us with high energy. Oh, that's sweet. Look at these rats. Dude's gonna make you go football mode. Yeah, really. He's playing a kick at me like a soccer ball. Ham, do you want to do a Just Chatting podcast? I would love that. That sounds super fun. Maybe not right now because I'm diseased, but that does sound like a good time. Uh, when my voice is better, I'd be totally game for it. I would love that. I've, been, I've always wanted to start a podcast, just generally. Fun fact. Just to be on a podcast or start a podcast, help out with the podcast. That all just sounds like really fun. Podcasts seem cool. They're a very, very fun medium. Oh my god, stop it. Why are your legs so long? Put them away. Nobody wants to see that. I mean, okay, no. Some people might want to see that, but I don't want to see it. The gallows. No, right now, stop it. <laughs> you need a first guest? I don't mind. Uh, just let me recover first so that way your audience doesn't have to hear this voice. This horrible, horrible voice. <laughs> and I'm totally good. I'm totally game. Um... Stay with the fl flock, it's the only way. Listen closely, brothers and sisters. Oh no, he's a preacher. Damn, he's an evangelic. Uh, evangelist, that's the word I'm looking for. He's an evangelist, fuck. We don't need any of them. <laughs> we must wear our wool proudly and show the world that plain is best. That's right, plain wool is the best wool. What the f fuck? All of these outlandish colors and head-splitting patterns do nothing but confuse and arrange the senses. Enrage the senses. They are the product of misled individuals. And as we all know, individuals are weak. Only they united are strong. Together we speak louder than a single voice. Wait, are all the colors bad then? What about gray? It's almost plain white. 
Gray is forbidden. Gray is a gateway to blue. And where there's blue, green isn't far behind. Then what's next? Yellow, purple, even red? No, no, anything but red. No. <laughs> Always remember, colors lead to discord, to chaos. And with chaos, the wolves will come for us all. This is unfortunate. I am not the wolves. Watch out. There's one right there. The nearest sheep nearly jumps out of its fleece when it notices you. I'm not a wolf, you halfwits. Maybe not, but you're different, and that's just as bad. Uh, right, boss? Oh, God. That's right. So what is an outsider? So what is it an outsider wants with us? Are you here to tempt my flock with your anarchic ideals? I doubt you lot would have room in your heads for any more ideals, but no, I'm here looking for the black sheep. Uh, I get the story now. It seems her shop was burned down last night. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Bah, that bothersome back black sheep is a thorn in my side. Never heeds my warnings. Always goes against what's good and proper. But I assure you, I was tending my flock all night. So I had nothing to do with her disappearance. That little sheepdog begs to differ. He says you've always had it out for the black sheep. And I'm inclined to believe him with all your prattling. Lies and slander. You have no proof of any wrongdoing. For all we know, she may have just left the kettle on. As the sheep stomps about, you notice flakes of ash leaving black marks on the cobblestone of the village square. Proof, eh? Looks to me like some of your flock have sooty feet. I wonder where the suspicious trail will lead. I see. Oh, there's soot. Um. How do we do that? Unveiling powder. Oh, I have some of that. I'll be sending out survey, survey applications soon. Hey, yo. Okay. Sounds good. You sprinkle the revealing powder over the cobblestones to reveal hidden footprints still blackened by ash. It appears as though several individuals were dragging something away from the town square last night. All right. Part of my yawning. I'm terrible about it, I swear. Ah, there's the trail. Okay. Get out of here. A struggle must have occurred here. You find the remnants of a torn burlap sack with some fistfuls of wool. The footprints leading away look to be moving at great speed, like someone was being chased. Hmm. I wonder how this iron nail is gonna end up being used. <laughs> um, uh, I need to make more unveiling powder. Perfect. Let me out. Thank you. A pair of lone fo footprints stuck into this vegetable garden. You notice some footprints searching in confused directions further afield. The black sheep must have been trying to hide from their pursuer. Maybe she managed to throw them off her trail. Maybe, but I highly doubt it. Okay. After following the ash trail through the back streets, you come to a dead end. Your only company is a stone gargoyle squatting atop a building corner. You stand on your tiptoes to examine the great carved demon closer, noting the lovely knitted scarf billowing around its neck. Hmm, what a fine garment. I could do with a new one. It's starting to get chilly. I just hope it hasn't gotten any of that bird poop on it. As you reach up to unwrap the scarf, the gargoyle's eyes swivel in their sockets with a sound like a grinding millstone. Well, excuse me. I'm quite fond of this avian ex excrement, actually. It adds a touch of authenticity to the whole ensemble, don't you think? Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't realize I was speaking to a watcher. Ha, huh, watcher, why is that no one ever comes to watch me? I'm a handcrafted from the finest block of artisanal granite. It's a masterfully chiseled that it came to life. 
Nothing on this earth or beyond has a greater claim to beauty than I, and yet day after day I sit up here and no one gives me so much as a passing glance. Well, maybe if you clean up once in a while. Oh, hush, I don't need to take fashion tips from you. And besides, you only looked up at me because of the fabulous scarf, admit it. I was merely following this trail of steady footprints. But now that you mention it, that scarf has a fine knit to it. You didn't happen to get it from a black sheep, did you? Why, where else would I have gotten some, something so swanky in this dreary little town? That black sheep's the only other person around here that appreciates good taste. Unlike that ghastly ram, always ringing that gaudy bell of his and poo-pooing everyone else's fun, the world is alive and needs a good splash of color once in a while. You know where that black sheep is, then? Now hold on, how do you- I know you aren't another one- another agent of banality like the ram. Just look at that skirt so last century. You'll have to prove you're an ally of the fashion scene before I say another word! Uh... <laughs> No, I've had my eyes on some new shoes for ages. Why don't you just snag a pair from the village? Surely no one will notice. Pa, those clogs aren't fit for a horse. No, I've got my heart set on elf shoes. Delicate, dainty, exquisite. And absolutely to die for. Plus, I could do it with a nice hat that could go with my fetching scarf. and Maybe some needle and thread to do some altercations. Well, what are you waiting for? The fashion scene moves too quickly to stand around idle. Um cat hello second hi what you doing hi second yeah I've got you captured you know that you have a kiss yeah you being cute can you say hi What are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so first, uh, sewing kit. I can make that now. Shit! I don't have any of the Skeeter Snoots. Damn, I thought I got some. Apparently not. Um. Okay. So I'll need a Skeeter Snoot first. Um, elf shoes from the village. <clears throat> but where would I get that though? Like, where would these elf shoes even be? Um... And there are the gallows. Oh! I'll have to trick him to stash those shoes. I have to make a shiny lure. I made a couple of them. There we go. Useful against elves and pickpockets. Nice! <laughs> Alright, so... I've gotten that done. Um, I also figured out what happens when you... 
pickpocket a what happens when you use a shiny lure on a pickpocket? Hell yeah! I'm just stealing his shoes. <coughs> oh god, not the mimic. Perfect. So we've gotten three elf shoes. Um, let's go to uh, where is the that takes you to the cat. Uh, Ah, uh, there it is. Passage. So, I need to go to- I didn't want to talk to the cat. Please stop. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so... To the forest. Uh, we need to go to the swamp to get the skeeter snoot for the sewing kit, and then we need to go investigate what's going on with the gnome and see what we need to do for that. I need like a uh, yeah smoke pellet and then logger's hatchet. Um, all right, now we got the skier snoot, so I can make the sewing kit, and now I just need the gnome's hat. Um, I feel like that's going to become a thing sooner or later. Excuse me. Hello, Haru. It is very fun. It's Witchwood. We're having a great time with it. It's actually a really good game. I recommend it um, if you haven't played it. It's very fun. Um, it's a bit fetch questy. So if you don't like, like if you hate fetch quests with an innate like hatred, like just like you hate them in every sense of the word, like the idea of like coming back and forth between locations and stuff. It might not be super fun for you, but like otherwise, it's it's really fun. It's a great game, and I recommend it. So do play it. it has a really nice crafting element. The story is super cool. It's also indie, which is another amazing thing about it. I always like to support indie creators because, well, they're indie creators. Um, perhaps I could puzzle him somehow. Puzzle box. Uh, seashell from the docks. Okay. So now I have to go to the docks, a place that I haven't been to yet. 
As the Final Fantasy fourteen is a lot of fetching. I grew begrudgingly used to it. I love to get this. Yeah, do it. It's also very cheap. It's like a very cheap game. It's on Switch. I believe it's on PlayStation as well. Um, and PC. I haven't seen a lot of people stream it either. So it's also a unique streaming experience. Oh, I was right, by the way, that this was the village. It's a very unique streaming experience. Uh, I've had nothing but a good time with it um, so far. It's also relatively short. Like, I think I'm already like, I mean, I don't know because I haven't played through this game before, but I think just judging by, you know, story progression reasons, I think I'm like a good third of the way through the game. So that's pretty cool. And I, this is like only my second stream with it, so. I think this is the way to the dock. I might be wrong though, but I'm pretty sure this is the way to the dock. It is, it's a beautiful, it's beautiful. It, it feels very storybook-esque and I kind of live for it. That's not what I'm looking for. Reminds me of Frambo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it has the same vibe to it. Yeah. Uh, if Frambo is less horrific, I agree. Um, which, by the way, that's another game I want to play at some point. Um, it's Frambo. I'll play that on stream once I have the ability to, I swear. Um... Just because I feel like that would be a fun game to play on stream. Maybe next Halloween. Uh -uh. It's also a great game for me to play right now is a sicky bean. Um, just because it's very chill. Like there's very little like skill based stuff. Like you're not stressing too much. Um, oh God. I joined the flock, follow the ram today. Looking for a seashell. Crab. Crab trap. Gull. A snap trap. Fishing spot. Fishing line. There's a fishing mechanic in this game? Yeah. Yeah. I, okay, y'all know the test. If it has a fishing mechanic, it's automatically a good game, so. Um. And it has a fishing mechanic, so. Barnacle. So it's a good game. That's, that's all. All I'm saying. Alright, I'm trying to get a shell. <coughs> oh, I got embalming salts from that. Neato. Yeah, the creature people. 100% gonna perceive every stream of that. I adore that for Hell yeah. That'll be fun then. We'll have a good time with it. Um... <laughs> I I murdered her, her, him. Uh, let me guess. The fishing line requires... Oh, it doesn't? I thought it was going to require a, a Skeeter Snoot. It did not require a Skeeter Snoot. Alright, hold up. Let me see if I can just, like... I got a fish! What the fuck... This fish seems to have skipped a few evolutionary steps. <laughs> Immaculate. Hold on. I gotta see what happens when I catch one. This fish seems to have skipped a few evolutionary steps. That's cute. Oh! <gasps> 
Nice. Oh, you are aggressive too? Tidal tincture. Deep one. Not quite a fish, not quite a man. Something from the depths. Damn. Barnacle crusters. To so many passerbys, this seems the yet another collection of crusty barnacles clinging to the surface of a stone until the tide near surges. But you can spot the inconsistency, the irregularities within the scattered arrangement. And with a single exacting touch, the illusion fades away. Below the tide pool. Hell yeah. Al J. Child, a riley looking kid, sobbing, clutching a fish for comfort. Excuse me, can you spare any seashells? I tried all along the beach, but everyone else always gets to them before I can. She points along the shoreline where you see scores of fishermen digging in the sand. Every so often, one of them discovers a seashell and rejoices as if it were a gold nugget. Seashells? What's the big deal with seashells? The little girl looks down at the docks to a particularly large ship at anchor. See that big boat over there? My dad's the captain. He was supposed to come ashore and tell me all about his adventures on the high sea like he always does, but he hasn't come out since they docked. So I tried to go see him, but there's a grouchy sailor who says I can't go inside the boat unless I got seashells. So I tried to find some, but now everyone else is trying to find them too. There's not a left left for me. Hmm, sounds fishy, all right. You stay here a little one. Let me have a chat with that sailor and get to the bottom of this. Really? Oh, I bet he'll listen to a grown up like you. I promise I won't move a muscle, and that's a pun. <clears throat> um. Well, the problem here is that I need a seashell, so... That's a little unfortunate. No, no, fam. Just gonna keep, like, looking for mounds to dig up. Pockets ripe for the plucking. Where does that path go? Oh, that goes back to the market. Fair enough. Thank you so much for the lurk, Hadu. Some crafting. Oh, that sounds fun. Have a have a go one. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it turns out well. Have fun with your crafting. Aha! Seashells. Perfect. That's what I needed. Alright, so I know I'm supposed to be working on the, the dock stuff, but I really want to finish the ram quest first. Um... Ah, they tried. Coming to say hi and bring along some hydration and salt. Make sure you're taking care of me. Love and carbs. Back to the depths of bread hell I go. Thank you, Brioche. I have hydrated. And I'm eating salt. Thank you. Alright, let's see. Oh my gosh, where was it? Where was it? Where? Where on the floor? Where? How did it get over there? It was not there before! My cat's collar has been unearthed. Sick him! Sick him! Sick him! I can't. I can't turn my neck that far. Hi! Oh, you're not gonna like it. <laughs> I got your collar. Hey. 
Nah. Oh, you're actually being very patient. Look at that. Yeah. You got your collar on now. Yeah, you got your collar on. Yeah, now if you get out, I don't have to worry. Yeah, because you got my number on you now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm smothering you. Mm -hmm. You like being smothered? <laughs> What's that face? What's that face? What's that face for? Oh. Oh. Yeah? Yeah? Is that your face of no? Put me down. Is that your face of no? No, you're smothering me, Dad. Yeah, I know. I know I'm smothering you. It's because you're so fucking cute. Look at you. You're so fucking cute. I can't help it. You got such a baby face. You little pointy bastard. <laughs> Alright. Alright, I'll put you down. Ugh. Read. Alright, we found it. We found the collar that's been missing for like two months. Ugh. Ah! <laughs> um. Oh, it's over there. Okay. Uh, yeah, right here. And then we can go to the fields to get the gnome. Um, yeah, fields. Perfect. Oh, now I can hear Sekem running around. Alright. Let's find that gnome! Should be around here. Ah! Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he just disappeared into the into the void. I put I took him to the back rooms. All right, to the village. Excuse me. All right. Um. Oh, I need to go back. Ow. Ow. That's what I fucking thought, bastard. I did that one out of spite. Well, what are you waiting for? The fashion scene moves too quickly to stand around idle. Here's your elf shoes. <clears throat> you set the tiny footwear aside. Well, uh... You tucked a sewing kit in a safe nook nearby. You set the little gnome hat nearby. As you present the handful of tiny clothing, the gargoyle lets out a grinding screech. What? What's wrong? These are simply magnificent! <laughs> the excited statue seems thrilled about the elf, sh elf shoes in particular. You nearly gave me a heart attack, and I don't see what's so great about those things. They're barely the size of thimbles. Ignoring you, the gargoyle ships the sh slips the minuscule shoes onto its wingling toes. 
Oh, but aren't they just lovely and they match my scarf? Well, I think you look ridiculous. Now tell me where the black sheep is or I'll turn you into gravel next. No need to wrinkle up your rags. I carried her out in, out to a secret grove in the woods to hide from the ram. Even managed to save some of her her stock as well. Since you've shown yourself to be no friend to the ram, I guess I could fly you out there too. The gargoyle flexes its heavy stone wings on its back. Let's go. Ah, oh, stay back. The ram sent you to finish me off, didn't he? Oh, crackers. I knew I couldn't trust that gargoyle to keep a secret. Calm down. I didn't come to fleece you. In fact, I came to see why that miserable tyrant tried to run you out of town. You glance around at the rescued rolls of patterned fabrics and balls of colored yarn. Hmm. All because of this lovely textile work? I never meant to cause trouble. I just wanted to make beautiful clothing. But the ram saw my work as some affront to his great vision. He wants all of us sheep to dress the same. Think the same. Be the same. But I don't understand. Why can't we be different? Oh, Lord. Hurry up from the rescue. I'm sitting at a table with a fancy supper. Supper minute. What? <laughs> Hope you're enjoying the wedding, Grizz. <clears throat> the loudest voice is seldom the wisest. Tears well up in the sheep's wide set eyes. They burned down my wool shop and tried to kidnap me. I only barely got away. Thankfully, that helpful gargoyle was able to salvage some of my things from the fire. At a time like this, knitting clothing is the only thing I can do to call miners. I hope I have enough yarn to last me. My poor spinning wheel is broken on the journey here, so I don't think I can make any more. A shame. I, too, am a weaver of sorts. Your wheel can't possibly be beyond repair. Can I take a look at it? If you think it would help, be my guest. All right. I can whip up a spell to restore this in no time. Restorative idol. Oh boy. A pumpkin jack bone. Okay. So you go back to the fields for that one. Mandrake root, which I have to go to the graveyard for. And a mending poultice. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. I don't think there's much around here. The game's going very well. We'll probably wrap up shortly just because I'm dying, but otherwise it's going very, very well. I'm having a good time. I'll probably continue playing this game for the next couple days while I try to get better. Um. And just kind of wrap it up by the end of the spooky season, hopefully. Just because I am... I, I feel like shit. <laughs> a massive, sa massive, saggy sack of shit. <laughs> That's where I'm at. <laughs> Shout out to anybody who knows, uh, knows the reference of that. It's not a very uncommon reference, so I hope you know what it is. Oh, shit. I'm feeling like a massive sack. Saggy shit. Oh, shit. Feeling like a big old duffel bag of shit. Oh, shit. Tell us how you feel. Are you feeling it lit? That's how you feel. No, I feel like shit. I need to go get the pumpkin jack bone. Let's, let's focus on the pumpkin jack bone before I get distracted. It's a right. I will. I'm gonna... Uh, I think I'm gonna get this pumpkin jack bone and probably and call it then. Um... That's because I don't want to go looking for the graveyard. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't feel like looking for the graveyard. Probably could find it relatively easy, but I don't feel like looking for it right now. My neck hurts too much. I'll probably do some rigging tonight, though. Um, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I am a sexy shit. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm gorgeous. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was, <laughs> eat salt. <laughs> Thanks for crow. <laughs> posture check. My posture is hard to check because my neck hurts. And hydrate. Hmm. 
All right. All right. What do you need? Snag mine. Oh no! I need another Skeeter Snoot. No. Okay. Uh, let's go get another Skeeter Snoot then. Gotta stay fresh, yeah, facts. Thanks for noticing, I'm not freaking blind! <laughs> Alright, let's go get the Skeeter Snoot then. I hate that they're called Skeeters. <laughs> I don't like that. Um. I don't know, it just feels wrong. It just feels wrong to call mosquitoes skeeters. I don't I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know why I don't like it. I just something about it feels not right. It just feels un unfortunate. It feels uncomfortable. I love it. What do you need? <laughs> Ski. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks. I hate it. Um. All right. So I got the sewing kit. Um. I can make the snag vine now. She's like, go back to the um to the fields and get the pumpkin jack bone. <laughs> Skeeta! <laughs> it's like the sound they make when they buzz right next to your ear. Yo, I hate mosquitoes. Every time I get bitten by a mosquito, I, my, the bite swells so big. Like it is so unfortunate. It becomes like the size of a grape in some cases. It's so annoying. <laughs> I have like an anti itch, uh, thing thankfully like an antibacterial um and uh anti-itch kind of pen like it's filled with this this stuff it's from a medicine company um it's just an otc medication that is topical like a topical ointment and you put it on top and it's supposed to stop you from itching it as well as like help heal so But, um, you know, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, annoying when it happens because the bug bite swells so big. And then I have people who are like, how big do your bug bites swell? And I'm like, uh, to the size of a grape. <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Every time they're like, huh? <laughs> they're like, why do they, why do they swell like that? And I'm like, I don't know. Have you tried leeches? I think I think I I would prefer not to. I think the leeches might cause more harm than good for me. <laughs> Thank you though, doctor. I appreciate it. <laughs> I don't know where the graveyard is. I know I said I wouldn't look for the graveyard, but now I'm kind of curious as to what the graveyard looks like. Okay, but that means you haven't tried it. I look, listen. No, I've been bitten by leeches before. I got really sick after. It might be worth investigating. The last time I got bit by a leech, it was because I accidentally fell into a lake. Um, and I came out of it with leeches on my legs, and I was like, shit, and then I got really, really sick. <laughs> it was not good. It was not good. It was not a fun time. I got very sick. Although I don't know if it was because of the leeches or because of some of, of you know, just happenstance. I still don't know. Um, but yeah, I got I got very sick. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. <laughs> 
know how your body takes in mineral via skin as well, right? I mean, yeah. Topical. Topical. No! Not the mimic! Get out of here! Fuck that mimic. Mummified head. Okay, but like... Okay, so that's not how you get to the graveyard. How do you get to the graveyard? I, <laughs> I don't know why Automod flagged that. Um, take less salt during the day and <laughs> the mosquitoes will not bite you. Hey, that, I think that's called a salt bath, I believe, is like the actual term for that. <laughs> Cause that's a thing. <laughs> to smell a rat. I actually, okay, I do want to take a salt bath soon though. They're nice. They're pleasant. They exfoliate. They're very pleasant. Although you're probably right. It might help the mosquitoes not to bite me. <clears throat> What'd you say? Which I say what? That you're, that I'm what? Salty, you haven't? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'll be honest about that. I'm a little salty. I haven't yet. All right, I want to see what this graveyard looks like. I'm very curious. Nudge, nudge. Fuck you. Why don't you go save Grizz from the wedding? <laughs> um, what am I trying to make? Mend the black sheep spinning wheel. I don't remember. Oh, I needed this. Oh, I needed the mandroid root. Okay. Sorry, ma'am, but I must warn you the graveyard's not safe right now. If you got flowers, I can go lay them on a, at a grave if you want. Blah, when I croak, nobody better bring me posies. What's the matter? Or something's got the spirits of this place riled up in a real bad way. All restless and cranky they is. There's this horrible howling coming from the mansion up the road. A scream that chilled the bumps right off again. Groose. Uh, every time I gather up my wits to take a look-see, my knees turn to jelly as soon as I set foot on the path. Mark my words, that creepy old place is haunted by something more than just a sleepless spirit. Pa, ghost stories are for children. When you get to be my age, take something special to put the fright in you. Well, if you're so sure about that, you can go up and tell me what you see. Maybe it has something to do with all those ghosts getting agitated. <clears throat> the rat. The mansion's just right up the road to the right. Can't miss it. Okay, I'll go up there in a second. That's the rat. Of an advanced age, this pooch isn't threatening anyone. Not anyone living, at least. I'm just stealing bones from the dead. Don't actually do this, please. Hey, oh, and I got the mandrake root. Okay. Oh, I need one more. Shit. <laughs> Ghostly grass trying to claw its way back to the life it lost. Oh, well, how unfortunate. Save my mortal enemy. Yeah, save your mortal enemy. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Maybe you can make amends. I'm sure you wouldn't want to be at an overly Christian wedding. <laughs> I don't think anyone would be. <laughs> Those things are boring as fuck. <laughs> no offense to anyone who's Christian and planning an overly Christian wedding. They're just really boring. I've been to so many and I hated each and every one of them. What the hell? Hanged ghost distinctly lacking the stillness characteristic of the dead. Ah, uh, the trigger warning? Question mark? Um, mild trigger warning, I guess? 
Uh, I'm gonna open up this area. Nope, I've been to one. They're- <laughs> They're- They're terrible. I don't like them. Ghastly head. Lost its body, but seemingly all the more spry for it. Oh, ghost, why do you weep? Sopping with grief, transcending death. Nice! Into the crypt! Hey, yo, that's my name! Oh, that's where I'm supposed to go. Okay, hold on. I, I love this area. This is so cool. Okay. Macabre Shrine. Where one might expect a door to a mausoleum, here instead stands a shrine adorned with with skulls. Perhaps a... Perhaps to deter closer inspection. But their arrangement does not serve the dead nor their memory. Instead being placed to mask a path beyond. Your knowing fingers reduce it to dust with a tap. All right. Uh, there is, but yeah, there is a trigger list, but I didn't expect to put hanging on there. Um, so it's a little short of that. Um, there is a trigger list though. <clears throat> I do have one. There you go. That's that's all that's on there. I didn't expect hanging to be amidst it. Like generally, I didn't expect to find a hanging ghost. I was like, huh? How about that? I mean, it's so like, um, so vaguely there that I was like, hmm, I guess it's no different from a Halloween decoration, but still. For Frank is no worse than the Nightmare Before Christmas. That's what my thought was, like the fact that they had the hanging tree in that movie. Oh, hi, did you need a lift? Yes, let's go. That's what my thought was too. I was like, it's not too bad, but I'll just include it next time. Like vivid depictions of, of ghosts and stuff. All right. Oh yeah. I need to actually craft the necromatic charm. All right. As good as new, a few splints and some elbow grease and she's all ready to go. Wow, really? Thank you so much. What can I ever do to repay you? I think together we should repa repay that stinking ram for causing this mess in the first place. I have an idea to knit him a card again. He won't soon forget. Why, a special gift? That's a lovely idea. But it will need a personal touch. Some wool collected from those dim-witted followers of his should do the trick. Hmm, the ram guards his flocks like an ogre. He won't be able to get a single hair off them without him watching. That is a problem. Oh, unless you find his missionary. Sometimes the Rand will send out loyal sheep to spread the word. Why, I bet if anyone could find them, it's you. You found me, after all. He spots his gibberish to the corners of the world. Where are those missionaries? Nearer than you think. They usually travel to the docks, the graveyard, and the market. A shame they won't have the Rand's protection. I've got plenty of place here, but if you need to have something in special mind, just put it by the spinning wheel. All right. I, all right. <clears throat> Metamorphosis elixir. Um, I can craft that part. And then I need the... Okay, so I need the... Cryptcrawler silk from the graveyard and the wool from the missionaries. I've seen some wool um but all right i think that's where we will end it today let me see if anyone's online that we can raid into um brioche is live all right i'll send you guys over to brioche brioche is cool um thank you guys so much for coming to the stream today i'm sorry i was so um 
low energy. Uh, again, I'm sick with just an infection, a generalized infection. Um, I should be spry in like a week or two, uh, but I'll keep streaming when I can. If I sleep through stream, uh, I'm sorry, uh, but I won't have a schedule set up, so it'll be kind of like sporadic here and there for the next couple days. I think tomorrow I'm going to aim to try and go live same time, same place to uh, play more Witchwood. I'm going to try and finish this game. And if I finish this game, I'll move over to either Inscription, Doom or Death's Door and try and focus on finishing one of them now that we're getting like halfway through spooky time. Um, if I have extra time after that, I'll play a different game, but uh, we will we will see. I know the game that I'm going to be avoiding for right now is Doki Doki Literature Club and Layers of Fear. Layers of Fear because I don't need to have a POTS episode while I'm sick with this. Um, because one of the ways you bring yourself down from like that feeling of going to pass out is breathing and I can't breathe very well. So <laughs> Layers of Fear is going to be put on an indefinite hiatus. I'll come back to it, I promise. It just, I don't know if it'll be if it'll be uh within the next week or two um but we've got like uh 19 days of ghastly gala so it'll be within those 19 days i, I promise um uh, as for doki doki literature club whenever i get my voice back i'll go back to that game that game has a lot of reading and i feel like part of the reason my voice is as hoarse as it is is because literally the day before i got sick i was reading doki doki literature club <laughs> so we'll get back to that also don't forget that on the i think it's the 28th i am doing my submission for paranoia um i <laughs> don't know how well that's gonna go because that's a visual novel um but i'll be part of the spooktacular event that they're holding at the end of the paranoia festival so keep an eye out for that i think it's the 20th it might be the 29th it's one of those two days so yeah well, i'm gonna send you guys over to brioche Bri brioche bitch um go send brioche love that's the wrong command oh boy go send brioche love um So go send Brioche some love. I'll put in the raid message. Here, copy copy this raid message. Enjoy. I did! I'm too sick! Um, so yeah, there you go. There's the raid message. Ramsey says I remember his own commands. Oh, I don't sometimes. Alright, thank you guys so much for coming to the stream. Take care of yourselves and each other, my shafties. Uh, please don't get sick like I did. I, um, it was literally the day after I said, please take care of yourselves because getting sick is super common um, right now. So please drink some hot drinks, get some soup, make sure to eat your vegetables, and please take care of yourselves and don't become like me. All right, see you guys all tomorrow, hopefully. Senefty.